Now, uh, as we talked about earlier, Nate, Steve Austin is going to be at WrestleMania and in the ring with Kevin Owens on the Kevin Owens show yeah. or whatever. O Owens, o Owens had a hell of a promo last night. Sure did. Sure did. And, and he's built it up perfectly. And I yeah. like Steve's thing that he sent in. But isn't it a bit predictable? I mean, don't we know what's going to happen? Uh, I I don't know what. You know, if Steve, I'm sure you and I think it's predictable. But for the fans out there, it's the fact that Steve's going to be on the show and going to hear that sound and you know, breaking glass and everything. I, and I'm, I'm one of Austin's biggest fans. Oh, oh no, me too. And, and predictable can be good. I yeah. don't have a problem with predictable in this case, but he's going to, he's going to stun Owens, drink some beers and celebrate with the crowd. That's what he's going to do. And there's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with that, but I think we know. I, I, I don't know what they're going to do, but I, I would assume that he'll be drinking some beer. And if he is, I hope I'm invited. Yeah, no kidding. Me too. Uh, yeah. But he, uh, are, are you surprised? You see, I am not surprised he's not doing a match. I don't think Steve's ever going to do another match. I, I just don't think he wants to. Well, I don't know that it's not a question. I think, I think he wants to be out of a shadow of a dollar. It's, it's, a, it's a health issue. I mean, if he could wrestle away, you know, I, people forget he retired at th age 39. Right. I mean, it, it was somebody, I, and I didn't, that, he made me aware of that a couple of years ago, about 39. God, how much was left on the table for Steve Austin? And look at after all these years, he's so revered. What, what else, what more can you say? Well, maybe that's part of it. Maybe, you know, he left them wanting more. I mean, clearly, you know, if it wasn't for the injury, he would have, like you said, gone a lot longer. But, uh, but again, uh, I, there's pros and cons either way. I'm kind of vacillating either way. I'd love to see him do another match, but I understand the value and not. And like you said, the health reasons. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I haven't talked to him, so I don't, I don't want to, you know, say anything to in, in that that's not accurate, but I assume that um, I would assume that Steve Austin the wrestler he, he totally looks like him. Mean, he, he Steve stays in good shape physically. He looks like a million bucks, but I assume if he could wrestle, he'd be wrestling full time. Do they still need John Cena at Mania? Do they need one more boost? No. Think they're fine the way it is? Yep. I mean, I, I'd love to see John, but I don't think they need him. No. Well, I think they have two great main events, and I think that's the the sum and substance of WrestleMania. I mean, yeah. Mage, this sounds very old school. Well, what John is John is so wrapped up in Hollywood now and doing and doing so well. I mean, he's in South America right now for a couple months, so you know that's a big a big sacrifice and a big you know a big commitment when you start doing the acting full time. So I I don't know that John, uh, you know. Yeah, if I asked John how he felt after his last match, and you take all that time off, it's hard to get yourself back in the kind of shape that you want to be in to be who you've been. You know, that's my problem. I could never get myself back to where I was. I just, even against Sean, people thought that was a hell of a match, but it was Sean Michaels carrying me. I mean, I can't, I know I've said it to you before, but if I had the same feeling when I got done after the match, it could have been 10 times better. Anyway, I, I think you underestimate your role in, in that and indeed in the latter part of your career. But I, but I do get it. And you've often said there's a difference between being in shape and being in ring shape. It's, it's exactly. vastly, vastly Ab different. Absolutely. What are the differences? The pace, I mean, you all the cardio in the world. It's not like, it, it's not like getting in a ring in front of 50,000 people and, uh, you know, nervous and sweating and. You know, I mean, what, what I knew when I, when I was at the top of my game, I didn't think about anything. I wasn't worried. I didn't. But once you've had any kind of a self-confidence issue, it's very difficult to swing that back around. And I just, I did that. I, I had at a young age and it came away and it came and it went away. Then I got it back again. And for various reasons, I just never, ever got back on my feet. Well, I... If I'd started a match with Taker in 2018 at WrestleMania 18, if I had started the match like I ended it, it would have been 10 times better. Well, I I thought that was great. I thought the HBK match was great, and uh, I think WrestleMania is going to be great. Like like we've been saying, because oh, I do a, too. A legendary main event on each night, but but I I, I do want to ask you one more question. We Next week, uh, Evil airs. What do you mean? You ever seen the previews of Evil? No. 
uh, the, the the WWE series on the best on the on the on the bat on the best bad guys of all time. Oh, I did see that. Yeah, you're in it, right? Obviously. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Does this signify a thawing of the uh, of the relationship, or? Oh, I don't know what it means, but <laughs> I've seen mine. <laughs> we'll see what everybody else has got. <laughs> well, uh, I wish I could play a clip of it on the podcast. <laughs> well, how uh, is that a series or is it one show or what? What it's is one show? All, they, they all drop the twenty fourth. I think was it is it six or eight of this? Okay, so it's it's a it's a series that that you can is binge it, watch. You can binge watch it, yes, and then it's it, um, one time. Well, I, I would assume that you're the most evil of them all. Well, I've seen my some of my shit. If they can follow that, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> it's been it's been, a, it's been a long time in the camp. <laughs> now, uh, turning back to WrestleMania, uh, the cards really coming together. We know about Brock and Roman. We know about uh, Charlotte and uh, and Ronda, which is going to be fantastic. But Kevin Owens has been insulting Texas in promos, and the rumor is Stone Cold Steve Austin might come back for a match with him at uh, at WrestleMania. Now, uh, I've not talked to Steve. I don't know if you have, but what would you say the odds of that happening are? I I don't know because um yeah I know that Steve keeps himself in very good shape. I have talked to him. I've not asked him that question. We probably talk once a month, but, um, and I'm not going to ask him because I want to be surprised, but, um, I would just hope that, that, that Steve goes and sees Dr. Youngblood or whoever, I think that was Steve's surgeon in San Antonio. I mean, you know, if, if it, Ed, Edge, you know, Edge was able to come back from a serious, but I don't think Edge's was as serious as, uh, Steve's. So, um. You know, I tell them all that it's hard to believe Austin, Austin retired at age 39. Yeah, he hasn't had a match in, uh, since 2003, the Rocket WrestleMania. That's a long time to come back after, isn't okay, it? How many years is that? Um, 19 by my count, but and I'm he, no math major. And he was 39, I think. Right. Right, he's so, 57 right now going on 58, correct. So 39 years, right? Correct. What I mean, what if Steve could have wrestled until he was in his late forties for sure? I mean, where 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 where, where, where would the history of the business be now if Steve would wrestle until he was forty five? Yeah, but but I mean, don't you? Isn't it good to leave him wanting more? I mean, I, I think oh, yeah, it served no, him well. No, no, I'm just saying, I'm talking about for him, right? How much money can you have? I mean, and Steve clearly loves the business; he respects it. And uh, there's a, there's another guy that if you went over to AEW, <laughs> Ben would be watching <laughs> with two monitors. <laughs> well, Nate, if you're looking at it from Steve's perspective, what are the pros and cons of coming back to do this one more time at age 57? The the only the only the only only the only thing that, that I hope that he takes in the mass consideration with his wife and family is his health because he could be part of the show and get and blow the roof off no matter what he does and i wouldn't want to see him kevin owens would be a great opponent though i'll give you, give you that if there's a guy that gets it in this business gets it on how to put someone in the position to where he is just incredibly Kevin gets how to make guys, not, not make guys, but Kevin gets how to work and be and get the very best out of whatever situation he's in. That, that's my take on Kevin. And, and, and Kevin Owen is the guy that is so respectful. If anybody deserves the opportunity to wrestle Steve, it would be Kevin Owen. Yeah, I, I agree with all that, Nate. Uh, he does a great promo. He works strong but simple. I don't think yep. it would be overcomplicated for Steve coming back after all that time. It'd be stunner versus stunner. You kind of have that angle too. He's I cutting love the it. he's cutting the Texas promos. You're right. It, that would be the perfect guy for Steve to wrestle. Oh, absolutely. But the, the, but ask him how I feel about it. It's a decision he has to make with his family, and 
you know, you don't ever know till you're out there how it's going to feel. You can practice all you want, but in practice, you're not going full speed. But he, he looks great. He stays in great shape. Steve works out every day. Um, like myself, he has a beer once in a while. <laughs> but that, that wouldn't affect his performance at all. And Scott, Sweet. can you imagine the, the entrance in Dallas, Texas, in the broken glass, and when we walked out to wrestle? Oh, my God. I won't be. I won't be allowed at the event, but I'm going to get in somehow. <laughs> hey, I already, I already rented a box at AT and T. I was smart of her. I was smart of Nick. Kind of got my own box. <laughs> now, now, uh, Steve didn't really break loose as a superstar until he just acted like himself. Nate, how many guys that have been real big stars are just amplified versions of of their real selves? Hmm. I think that applies to you. Amplified stars, you mean like live their gimmick? Yeah, or 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 their gimmick becomes the way they lived in the first place. I think that's what happened with Steve. Yeah, he just, I mean, I, yeah, I, you know, he, well, he was he's such a great worker. I mean, Steve Austin is a great worker. Um, but, um. I think it's, it, I think the word great comes into play a lot easier when you're very comfortable with your character. Using my daughter right now, she has finally, not finally, she's always been a great, but now she's a, she is so confident. And I mean, it's a whole different because they finally have established her as a heel and not a tweener. The tweener is really hard to get down when one day you got to be this, one day you got to be that. Does it make sense? Oh, no. And I, 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 I'm, I'm sure she's very comfortable with what they have. Her oh, my God. Well. It, 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 it's like night and day. She's not a tweener anymore. And Rhonda is a full-fledged babe face. It's going to be, it, it's got to be the main event one night, and it's going to be incredibly difficult. That's the thing now. Who can follow who? That, that, that's the kind of, that, that's what makes WrestleMania for me. When you have this many great matches, it'll be who can follow who. Now, uh, was Steve the most over guy ever within a, a short time frame? obviously cut short because of injury? Yes. In my opinion. That's amazing to say, isn't it? But I agree. Absolutely. I, I don't think it's amazing to say at all. I don't know. Well, no, no. I mean, from the standpoint, hey, you and I worked with Steve in WCW when he was stunning Steve Austin, when he was Pillman's tag team partner. And I always knew Steve could be way bigger than he was given the opportunity to be in WCW. Absolutely. But when he went to New York and just was himself and just, you know, just burnished what he already was, to see it play out, that was the amazing part. I never doubted it, but, but it took a while for us to get a chance to see it, for him to get a chance to do it. Exactly. But that, that's, you know, the, the thing that makes Steve so great and what he never quit. He never quit. I, I actually believe like he's like so much like Charlotte. They get up every day, want to be better. And, and Steve is, you know, dealt with the trials and tribulations and, and he worked those long, long 70, 80 day road tours. I mean, Steve paid the price to be great. Now, Steve, and you touched on this earlier, Rick, Steve revolutionized the merchandising business in wrestling. He took it to a whole different level, didn't he? Absolutely. Without a doubt. And he designed a lot of his own T-shirts. I did not know that, but I can believe it. Yeah, I mean, he got a bigger cut. John, John Cena designed all, all his. Yeah, and I, I'm pretty sure that leads to a, a bigger cut to some degree. Uh, it gets me to think of H. What if back, like in the Crockett days, they would have merchandised you the same way. Imagine how, how big that would have been. I know I wouldn't be on a show with you right now. I'd be on a yacht. Okay, for one thing, you're on a, a boat half the time anyway. <laughs> Not a yacht, though. <laughs> and you could and you could never resist doing this show. Come on. <laughs> but uh, now, now, Steve was a child of the Attitude Era. Would Steve still have been as big a star without the Attitude Era, and would the Attitude Era have been as big without Steve. 
the Attitude Era would not been it would not have been nearly as big without Steve, and Steve would have been a big star without the Attitude Era. With I don't even have to think twice about that. See, I feel like Steve was the Attitude Era. I, I think that phrase has been used to encompass a lot that happened, but I think he was pretty close to the be all end all. Him and his dude with Vince. Absolutely. I mean, it just nobody saw it coming. It was absolutely phenomenal. As on-air characters, did Vince make Steve or did Steve make Vince? Um, now, that's a tough question. I mean, I don't think anybody made Steve. I think Steve made himself. But Vince was the perfect. I mean, for a guy that never wrestled, never did anything, I mean, Vince had that promo. He has it to, to this day. And, and that's a gift. I mean. We all want to think that you just that you're able to rattle us off and guys write it down. You've got to feel it. Vince, when Vince talks, you know that somebody is, is drafted it because that's the way he likes to do stuff. But he says it because he believes that's who he is. And the same applies to Steve's day. I don't care what you, you write down for Steve or give him or what you maybe you didn't read anything. What what Steve is saying, he believes, and that's what makes it so good. Now, uh. Yeah, I, I thought that, you know, it, it's funny because when Vince became the evil owner, he was great. It'll never be done better. And you know how I know it'll never be done better because everybody's tried since then. It, it was it was weird because I loved it when he did it, but what it gave birth to, I wasn't crazy about. How about you? Uh, you mean other people trying to do it? Yeah. Well, there, there's that, <laughs> it goes without saying, nobody's ever... No one's ever come close to being uh, an owner with it and being active on this show. Yeah, I, I mean, I mean, I mean, Stephanie brought a lot to the show too. Myself, I mean, I, I still like uh, <laughs> what were they called, Stephanie and Hunter, um, the authority. <laughs> I thought that was great. Stephanie McMahon is one of the top ten best heels in our business. Oh, no question, no, no, no. question. When Stephanie wants to get her shit on and fucking turn it on, Stephanie McMahon, I swear to God, is one of the best heels in the business. I use this extra all the time. You're killing me. <laughs> she, is, she is something special, man. Do you remember when he came with you on Flair for the Gold, your talk show? Yeah. Him and Pillman. I thought that's one of the great TV segments of that era ever. What do you remember about that? Oh, it's great. They were basically telling me and Arn we were done, <laughs> which, which, behind the scenes, Bischoff was trying to make happen. <laughs> yeah, I, I watched that back on YouTube the other day. Uh, I, I, I remember when Austin said, Rick, I love you. You're done with the place. You got that big old stuffed bear in the corner. And Pilbert yeah. goes, careful, Steve, that's double A. <laughs> <I know. laughs> yeah, well, hey, great times, great places, great memories. Now, if you can bring Steve back for Mania, you should. You got to. That's a no-brainer. But does that in any way diminish any of your current talent if you feel like you always got to bring back the old guys well, for big events? Well, but, but and this is not the situation at all. WrestleMania will sell out with or without Steve Austin being Right, right. But if they want what they're trying to do now is blow a number on Peacock, that'll be heard around the world by Brad and Steve. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, it's absolutely. I mean, just that, just it, 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 Steve will be down there. He's going to break the glass. He's going to walk out there. I mean, that the 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 sound effect, and whether he's cutting a promo or wrestling, it'll, it's going to be huge. Everything Steve Austin does with the company is huge. Now you hear rumors of another big surprise at Mania besides Austin H. Uh, who could that possibly be? I, I mean. We'd both be just guessing here, but who could live up to that hype of being a big surprise to stand alongside Steve Austin? Stand alongside him or wrestle him? No, no, not wrestle him, but be be on the same card where Steve is is the surprise to wrestle Kevin Owens. Just a name from the past, you mean? Yeah, I mean, whether Rock, Cena, whoever. It would have to be Rock. But I don't think it's going to be. I think they're going to save Rock for when he wrestles Roman Reigns. I think that's... That's Rock's big blow off at some point. Well, but he did ask me who I thought it would be in terms of being equally as big as Steve. There's only one person that could be out. That would be the Rock. 
No, no, that's the point. You made it. I mean, that maybe they should just stick with Steve and save whatever for later on down the road. Yeah, I, I don't know. But if you're asking for someone that can stand out there and and, and get the kind of uh, reaction, it would be uh, definitely be Dwayne. Now, the Rock against Roman Reigns at some point would be huge, wouldn't it? See who the real tribal chief is. You got the storyline. You got The Rock, who is such a big star that transcends wrestling. I would love to see that happen, and I bet we do someday. I, I hope so, because it's another one of those things that that people have talked about for years, and when it finally happens, it, it's big. It, it's it's kind of like everybody talked about me and Hogan for years. It didn't happen, but I, you know, it did later on, but not at WrestleMania level, so... You know, you know, you give Roman Reigns credit all the time, and I and I agree with that totally. Oh, it's I, fantastic. You know, it, it it took a while. Why did it take so long for him to finally break through? But when he broke through, he broke through so big. Um, you know, I don't know well enough to to have that the explanation of that. It just it 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 doesn't happen day one. He's been the handsomest guy, well built. I mean, it's got everything going, and all of a sudden, two years ago, it just maybe what he's been there. I mean, he's always been good, but then one day he got great, and I thought he did a hell of a job with Bill um, at the um, Elimination Chamber over in uh, over in Saudi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, that, I, that that match didn't hurt anybody. No, and, 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 and I mean. The way they did it, and and it was safe, and nobody was complaining, and Bill looked like a million dollars. I mean, shit. Bill looked his body. Bill's Bill's uh, physique was as good as it was looked as as in shape as he did back in uh, um, WCW days. Yeah, I think one thing that 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 held Roman back was I thought they waited a long time to pull the trigger on him going heel. I think he's a marvelous heel. I just think he's better in that role. Oh, I do too. But because you know he feels it, and you can tell tell by the way he walks through the ring. He, he's got it. This is where it's at, guys. First of all, he's the handsomest guy in the business in a long time, but he's got it here. Well, no, no. I mean, from the standpoint, hey, you and I worked with Steve in WCW when he was stunning Steve Austin when he was Pillman's tag team partner, and I always knew Steve could be way bigger than he was given the opportunity to be in WCW. Absolutely. But when he went to New York and just was himself and just, you know, just burnished what he already was, to see it play out, that was the amazing part. I never doubted it, but but it took a while for us to get a chance to see it, for him to get a chance to do it. Exactly. But that, that you know, the, the thing that makes Steve so great and what he never quit, he never quit. I, I actually believe like he's like so much like Charlotte. They get up every day, want to be better. And and Steve is you know dealt with the trials and tribulations, and and he worked those long long seventy eighty day road tours. I mean, Steve paid the price to be great. Now Steve and you touched on this earlier, Rick. Steve revolutionized the merchandising business in wrestling. He took it to a whole different level, didn't he? Absolutely. Without a doubt. And he designed a lot of his own T-shirts. I did not know that, but I can believe it. Yeah, I mean, he got a bigger contract. John Cena designed all of his. Yeah, and I, I'm pretty sure that leads to a, a bigger cut to some degree. Uh, it gets me to think of H. What if back, like in the Crockett days, they would have merchandised you the same way. Imagine how, how big that would have been. I know I wouldn't be on a show with you right now. I'd be on a yacht. Okay, for one thing, you're on a, a boat half the time anyway. <laughs> Not a yacht, though. <laughs> and you could and you could never resist doing this show. Come on. <laughs> but uh, now, now, Steve was a child of the Attitude Era. Would Steve still have been as big a star without the Attitude Era, and would the Attitude Era have been as big without Steve. The attitude era would not have been it would not have been nearly as big without Steve. And Steve would have been a big star without the attitude era. With I don't even have to think twice about that. See, I feel like Steve was the attitude era. I, I think that phrase has been used to encompass a lot that happened, but I think he was pretty close to the be all end all. Him and his dude with Vince. Absolutely. 
I mean, it just, nobody saw it coming. It was absolutely phenomenal. Do you remember when he came with you on Flair for the Gold, your talk show? Yeah. Him and Pillman. I thought that's one of the great TV segments of that era ever. What do you remember about that? Oh, it's great. They were basically telling me and Arn we were done. <laughs> which, which, behind the scenes, Bischoff was trying to make happen. <laughs> yeah, I, I watched that back on YouTube the other day. Uh, I, I, I remember when Austin said, Rick, I love you. You're done with the place. You got that big old stuffed bear in the corner. And Pilma yeah. goes, careful, Steve, that's double A. <laughs> yeah, well, hey, great times, great places, great memories. Now, if you can bring Steve back for Mania, you should. You got to. That's a no-brainer. But does that in any way diminish any of your current talents? If you feel like you always got to bring back the old guys well, for big events. Uh, but uh, but uh, this is not the situation at all. WrestleMania will sell out with or without Steve Austin being Right, there. right. But if they want what they're trying to do now is blow a number on Peacock, that'll be heard around the world by Brad and Steve. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, it's absolutely. I mean, just that, just it, 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 Steve will be down there. He's going to break the glass. He's going to walk out there. I mean, that the 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 sound effect, and whether he's cutting a promo or wrestling, it'll, it's going to be huge. Everything Steve Austin does with the company is huge. Pat McAfee, as had been reported, it's going to be Pat against Austin Theory, who is Vince's protege. Does that mean as much? I don't think it does, but do you think Vince is going to get involved at some point? Absolutely. What do you think he'll do? He did the gym right now training by prediction. He'll come out looking like he's a, with a body of a 25-year-old man, like he does. He'll do something. He, he, he doesn't do these podcasts and stuff like this without some kind of a master plan. He's not just going to be the guy. He'll be, he'll be on TV, and I'll, I'll be looking forward to that, too. I text Pat, uh, he goes, he goes, you get a text from the great Rick Flair, that means a lot. I said, brother, you eat better than, than 50% of the guys on the show right now. In terms of energy, and, and he, he was so damn good with that kid the other night when he was kicking that kick in Harry's ass, and not Harry's yeah, foot. Yeah, no, yeah. Austin looked, Theory. He, no, he, looked, he looked like he better the business. For 20 years, jumping on the table, and punches. I mean, he was, he was great. I texted him, brother, that's the most energy I've seen out of anybody in a long, long time. It looked like that, that was damn good. That was as good as the thing with Ashley and Rodman the night before, or well, last Friday, or two what? Fridays ago, when Ashley jumped in the garage. That, and that, and that, to, that to me is what makes an angle when it, people really get after it. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, I mean, if you, if you, they've got to believe they're going to see war, and they, and believe that it's going to be a war with Ashley and Ron. I, I'm convinced it's going to be just fabulous. No and question. I think, and, I, and I think what I think the theory has got his hands full of bad back of me. I think theory is over the two. Well, I I don't, I, I don't think Pat's intimidated by him at all. <laughs> no, I I well I don't think Pat's intimidated by much. I mean, you saw him as a punter, how he would. Making yeah. a lot of crushing tackles when he was the last man. Yeah. And I've known Pat Rick since he was a kid. And let me yeah. tell you, mm -hmm. Pat didn't dream of playing football as a kid. That mm -hmm. wasn't his goal. He didn't dream of punting in the NFL. He dreamed of this. He has waited for this moment. And, you know, WrestleMania, whatever he has, he's going to put on the table. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I mean, I'm looking forward to it. He's great. I told you when I watched him at NXT, I was amazed what he was able to do. Well, and like I said, I think he'll pull out all the stops for this. Hey, this is the Nature Boy, Ric Flair, 16 times your world champion. As you know, the host of Whoa Nation, and along with my co-host, the infamous Conrad Thompson, the millionaire with nothing but time. <laughs> and today we have the most special guest we've ever had on the show. Actually, the man responsible for getting me this podcast with CBS. The legendary, the one and only Stone Cold Steve Austin. Steve, how are you? Man, I'm doing good. I had a good time last night. It's funny because as we talk, we're here in New York City in the world's smallest hotel room. 
<laughs> God dang, Conrad walked in. I thought we was going to need a crowbar and a shoehorn to get him in the room. <laughs> I ain't saying that to knock Conrad. I'm saying that to knock how small these hotel rooms was. And the funny thing is, I walked into the bar last night just looking to get a little bit of Mexican food. And it's funny because it's an Irish-Mexican food combination. So it's a weird combination. I said, yeah. damn, it's Ric Flair sitting at the damn bar. <laughs> but I don't want to bother you because you're deep in conversation with Conrad. And then he knows me, and he brought our attention together. Of course, there we are sitting there drinking beer. So here we are doing doing a podcast. Well, beer and, and uh, a little tequila. Hey, no, no, no. A little Crown Royal for him. And, but and we, but we didn't go crazy. Now, no, Conrad no. did. Yeah. <laughs> I thought Conrad was going to wear his damn arm out. I got bartender back. Yeah. Did you see the bartender's shoes? Yeah. He had full tracks in yeah. the end by the time yeah. it looked like his cleats is melting <laughs> off. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey Rick. Hey, hey. And thanks, that, was, that wasn't that bad cook either. Yeah. <laughs> thanks for having me on the show. I've been wanting to pay you back because you're on my show way back in the day. And then you did me. I, 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 call, I call that one segment a 15 minute Broadway. We went 45 minutes. Yeah. So. I owe you the return favor. I'm glad to be your guest, and you're my favorite wrestler of all time, so I'll leave it over to you. Well, thank you. You know, it's the irony of this is what she just brought to my attention. Our first show was at SummerSlam two years ago, our first meeting up in the hotel room after my infamous day and, uh, <laughs> and my infamous uh, appearance still, at crazy. 2K where you're going tonight. It's funny I haven't been invited back by 2K. <laughs> But that was that was like uh, that was like in Roswell. I mean, I mean, still no one really knows what happened that night. But uh, jobs were lost, tears were shed, and, <laughs> and, and people were sent places <laughs> where we won't tell. But <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah, I mean, a lot went down in a very short period of time. And for the record, the uh, the can popping was Diet Coke this time. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a little uh, different two years later. Well, yeah, but you know, it's funny because when I went up to Steve's room, I said, "Steve, I'm in enough trouble. I'll let's just get a case of beer." <laughs> the hell? And he said, "You're right. Who cares?" I don't think I can dig you out of this, Rick. We'll have some fun talking about it, though. <laughs> Jesus. And it's funny. Steve was laughing his ass off. I mean, everybody was enjoying it. and I was It was just, great. No, no, it was great until I brought up the fact that John Cena was, was drinking. That, that's the part that rubbed him wrong. And probably mentioned that Daniel Bryan had never been to a WrestleMania. So why could you ask him the question? <laughs> I, I, I think at the end of the day, it was good for 2K, and they everybody uh, there enjoyed it. I mean, maybe it was that they enjoyed it because it was a train wreck, but nonetheless, <laughs> yeah. it's a night I'll never forget. <laughs> yeah. No, the 2K talk. people loved it. They said, that was so exciting. It was so boring. And I said, well, that's what I'm here for, guys. But um, anyway, 2K hasn't invited me back. Thank God I'm in the game. <laughs> Steve can speak for me today because I'm in so the game. So 2K invited you here? Huh? So 2K invited you here? Are you going to be there tonight at the same No, 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 no. No, I still have them on the game. They have not oh, invited okay. me back to participate in the gotcha. panel. Even though they might like me, the WWE would probably go on maybe another time. <laughs> <laughs> Rick signing somewhere. <laughs> They're not going to have Woo Nation back on the 2K16 <laughs> panel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. So anyway, Steve, we were talking about last night. You know, there is so much that goes into your career. And I mean, I go back and I was thinking last night about talking about you and Steamboat and how great the matches were and how in Iowa one night, Hogan and I had to go on after he and Steamboat went on and career. But then I, I go back to another incident that was great too. We were in Norfolk, Virginia. It was me and Arn Anderson against you and who? God dang it. You see, here's the thing, Rick. You remember more about my Brian. Than I, uh, it was Brian. Pittman, oh, Brian. Right? Okay. We yeah, tore yeah. it down, man. Yeah. And Arn and I didn't tag that much because he was basically Tully, but Tully had gone, and uh, we went. They put us on in Norfolk for about thirty minutes, man, and we tore the joint down. I used to love that building in Norfolk. Oh. That, was, that was a good, good neck of the woods for pro wrestling. Yeah. And good times. And man, I miss Brian to this day. Oh, geez. And because I, I never did really like tag. Team. Well, I love to watch tag team wrestling because it can be so exciting when. You have teams like, you know, Arn and Tony, Arn and uh, Ole, yeah. uh, the Midnight, the Rock and Roll. Yeah. And, you know, we got together as Hollywood Blondes, and we were, we established this chemistry. That's when I really fell in love with it. Yeah. But that, then, you know, you always have the, the, the liability of relying on your partner to stay healthy. Yeah. And so I got smoked. I tore my arm up. And anyway, they split us up. But I got a lot of fond memories of Brian. But, man, Norfolk, those were some back— that was back when, uh, you know, that old school wrestling. Oh, sure. Was, it was bad. And, uh, yeah. you know, the, the buildings were about a half to three quarters full. It wasn't like the territory was on fire, but it was one of the funnest times of my life because you were still running rough shot. Yeah. Arn was still yeah. bring all the guys that I looked up to and I was sharing the same line. Well, you me. guys crashed a flare for the gold. And it yeah. had the deal, and it, and it worked out <laughs> great. You know, the thing was, you know, sometimes, and it's only the, the only, I don't, I'm not even going to mention your names, 
But sometimes when something gets over so good, they just pull the carpet. And that thing got over great when you and Brian came out. And we had one match, and then nobody got hurt that night. They didn't get hurt that night, but they just took their, took the program away. Yeah, yeah, it was what it was. But, yeah. you know, I went on down the road and everything happened. It yeah. Okay. No, it worked out well, right. <laughs> But, I mean, I was mad as a hornet because, you know, first of all, when they were going to put us into it, uh, you know, right there in Dothan, Alabama, I was about to go on a singles run with Harley Race as my manager mm -hmm. as a U.S. champion. All of a sudden, the rug got pulled out from under me, and then they put me and Brian together. We got that over, and then they yanked that out from under me. So I was like, man, I don't know the crap or wind my watch, you know, yeah. WCW. But, you know, again, it was what it was, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy everything ended up like it did. Yeah, I mean, you went down the road, and it's kind of like, you know, I think about this, too. Hunter came to me, and he goes, um, when Hunter is like 93, and you'd already you'd already taken off. Yeah. And Hunter goes, um, you know, they offered him like 250 grand because he was Regal's partner, the, the Blue Bloods, whatever they were. And, uh, you know, Vince called him, and I go, hey, you know, it's 250 grand. He, he said, I, it doesn't matter, which caused one of the biggest fights I've ever had with Randy Savage, all in the same story. He said, I'm gone. And, of course, the rest was history with Hunter. Right. Came up to join you, and, I mean, everything just started falling together for them again, thank God. But Savage it came in that day, and Savage wanted to beat Hunter in, like, 30 seconds. I said, that ain't going to happen. Beat him where? Down in WCW? He wanted to beat him in in, in the center stage oh, in really? 30 seconds. 30 seconds. And the week got in the way out. And I said, that ain't going to happen. Savage, got, Savage and I had the worst argument of all time. Not that I had anything, but I did, you know, when you like someone's talent, you just don't squash a guy going out the door. I mean, you know. Right. And I, I mean, I don't think it, you don't do, I don't think you do that to a guy, you know. It's kind of like, you know, and I'm, I'm, I throw another story into it. When I did the, the, the favor for Kurt Henning to go back to WCW, you know, Ole says to me, what are you worth to me now? He just did a loser leave town last night on national TV. I said, Ole, I'm going to show you what I'm worth to you. And I went next door to Bob Dew and I said, it's me or him. <laughs> See, only it's true yeah. story. Wow. No, I did. I mean, I mean, what I mean, just because I, I Kenny didn't beat me in five seconds. He beat me in a twenty-minute match. It was a great match. Yeah, I think it went real well. And yeah. we, and I, we did a thing the week before with Santana. You know, Vince doesn't do stuff like that, right? And uh, so I, <laughs> that's when me and Ole really fell apart. And he said, "You're not worth anything to me now." I mean, Jesus, uh, doing a favor for someone like Kurt Henning doesn't hurt anybody. No. Well, not, especially with this, with WCW on the, yeah. closing the doors. Yeah. They couldn't get anything going. You know what I mean? And then, so anyway, Hunter left, and I, I had him I had Savage wrestle arm for 20 minutes. So you know, when it aired, he called me, and he goes, Savage goes, that looked like shit. I blew up. I said, buy a Stairmaster and hung up on him. <laughs> True story. <laughs> You know, so you and Hunter were friendly even back in the WCW days when he was. That's first, how he yeah. got into, he got into business through me. Oh, I didn't realize he, that. he worked at the Gold's Gym in West in uh, Westchester, Mass. Uh, he's from Massachusetts. What the right, right. New Hampshire, New Hampshire, Westchester, New Hampshire, right? Gold Gym, and he came down to a Gold Gym seminar, and that's when I had the eleven clubs in right. uh, North Carolina and South Carolina, and uh, that one in uh, I've had in the Caribbean for a while before the hurricane. And uh, he was working the Gold's Junior, and he came down to an uh, ACS seminar, which was American Club Systems. It's a management company. And, of course, I, I came out of the bar entertaining as myself, right, with a balloon <laughs> or something like that. And yeah, Hunter, and, and Hunter handed me a tape. I took the tape back, and he was in Atlanta two weeks later. That's cool. And then the great story, when he walked in the door, and I, Steve, you'd already gone by then, and he walked in the door, and <laughs> Harley was sitting there, Harley was managing Vader, and, <laughs> it's a great, I, you know, early race, and you love him like I do, Steve. So I go, uh, uh, Harley, this is uh, Paul Levesque is going to be Triple H. And, and Harley goes, who trained you, kid? <laughs> and uh, this is in Hunter's voice, but I always love doing this. Killer Kowalski. <laughs> He's the shit. <laughs> <laughs> true, true story. He didn't hardly have he with Kowalski. He didn't want hardly want a friend to say what he thought. Kowalski wouldn't work. He knew that. Right. He looked like a million bucks, and when he didn't, became a vegetarian. Didn't even look good. <laughs> Jeez, he used to have the greatest look in the world. But what got him over was jumping off the top rope and taking over UConn, taking off UConn Eric Zier. Right. Yeah, and uh, so, dude, that was a shoot, though. UConn Eric Zero, but basically, it was just so cauliflower and calcified it knocked it. It was an accident, of course. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not that those guys were stiff back, and I, I just saw. I came in at the tail end of guys like Hans Schmidt and all that. You know, I saw right. him. I never had to work with him, but 
some of those guys were just brutal, man. And I just saw that at the end of it, you know, basically, um, you know, it's like I tell the story when I was in the locker room, my first show in Minneapolis, 1972, and Mad Dog Vashon is the AWA champion, right? And uh, if you didn't know Mad Dog, you, of course, have met him over the years, of course, right? Yeah, and the only one voice like that in the world. And I guess Kanye came in and said, you're going to do the favor tonight. And we <laughs> could hear, not tonight, Gagne. <laughs> not tonight and not until I say so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what do you, oh, what you say to that? Yeah, why, why do you, you didn't, the Mad Dog was shy. He didn't say much at all. Not only was he tougher than hell, he was a real good amateur wrestler. He was on the 48 Olympic team. Same team that Vern right. was on. Uh, he represented Canada, and Vern was an alternate for the United States. He was a good amateur wrestler. That's cool. But tougher than hell, too. I mean, Mad Dog stories are legendary. But right. anyway, going back to, to Steve. So Steve moved on, and then you got up there, and you went to ECW, correct, first for a while, right? Yeah, yeah, you know, arm was busted, and uh, Eric Bischoff fired me on the phone, and so Pauly called me and said, hey, man, come up here and cut some promos. And I was like, that sounds good to me because, you know, at the time, man, I had a wife and a kid, a house pay payment to make just like everybody else, so I would have better started to cut a promo. And, uh, you know, with Paul Lee, it first kind of opened my eyes up to, to learning how to do that. If there was anything that I was missing, mechanically, I was proficient in the ring. I could have a match with anybody. Oh, yeah. About five, six years in. I certainly wasn't a superstar by any stretch of the imagination, but the mechanics I had down, uh, the psychology, you know, obviously, man, I think that 10 year mark is really the magic mm -hmm. mark for going back and forth, hill and baby, uh, to, to really have everything down and at, at a, at a very, you know, knowledge that's very, has a lot of depth to it. So anyway, Bill Byrne cut promos with Paul Lee and he helped, he helped a brother out. And then, you know, by that time, Vince called me and went up there as a ringmaster. And you know, of course that gimmick was a drizzling shits, but at least it got me to do it. Yeah. Yeah, well, I don't know. Tell me, I, I, I know how the Stone Cold thing came about. So the ringmaster was that Vince's idea or yours? No, hey, <laughs> no, no. I mean, I, I didn't know you pitched him. I stuck with this computer <laughs> cord. <laughs> no, no, I didn't know. Who, I didn't know who pitched it. He just gave that to you. Hey, no, my phone rang. This is a shoot. Back in the day, you know, you used to have, you know, telephones that hang on a long, yeah. long cord. Yeah, yeah. You know, and you first it come with a little five foot cord. But if you had a little dough, you'd go down to Radio Shack and get you the 20 foot cord so you can actually do something, right? Yeah. So anyway, my phone rings. I answer it. It's fucking Vince. Yeah. And he goes, Steve, Vince McMahon, how you doing, pal? I said, I'm doing good, Vince. Yeah. He goes, well, I want to run something by you. I want to bring you in as the ringmaster. You know, the master of the ring. And I'm sitting there thinking, what the fuck? The master at the ring? The ringmaster <laughs> sounded like shit. But I got bills to pay. So I said, yeah, yeah sounds like a good idea. What time you want me to start? So I fly, yeah, I come on in. But you know, originally, I guess this gimmick had been around. Uh, their creative staff had, I guess, stockpiled a couple of gimmicks. Yeah. And, of course, they didn't see nothing in me. I kind of had thinning blonde hair, you know, and I had a decent physique. I wasn't a bodybuilder. I was I kind of wrestling physique like yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. You know, got it looked pretty good, but we're not going to blow the doors off anybody mm -hmm. when you walk down the beach. But I could go a little bit, yeah. you know. And so he just kind of had this gimmick for me. It's pretty much a throwaway gimmick, I think. And I said, well, what do you want me to do for an outfit? And they wanted to put some uh, those uh, dark green trunks on me, like because they were the color. Yeah, of money. I, I never saw you as the ringmaster. Oh yeah, so it, it, I, it I never saw it. it. That's why. Brief. And yeah. uh, because it was color money, and they, and they said we're going to bring you in uh, Ted DiBiase. He's going to be your manager. You're coming as a million dollar champion, so you'll come in as a champion. So we're going to put DiBiase as my mouthpiece because I knew I couldn't talk. Uh, well, they hadn't seen ECW stuff yet. And I said, what about boots? Because I still had those white uh, Hollywood blondes boots yeah. with a star on them. He goes, I don't worry about the boots. I'll be fine. I said, well, what about a jacket or anything like that? Don't worry about a jacket. So when they tell you, don't worry about boots, don't worry about a jacket, they're yeah. going to stick some green trunks on you. I know that they really ain't thinking I'm going to get over for shit. So yeah. nonetheless, I went up there and it sucked ass. And then six months later, I come up with a different gimmick. And then that's how we shifted in the Stone Cold thing. But that gimmick was originally pitched to me. It was from their creative. And, you know, that was my foot in the door. And everybody knew it back in the day. Now, don't get me wrong. When you were in uh, running rough shot at NWA, that was a place to be. But but as things, you know, transitioned, everybody knew that the WWF was the big leagues. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's where you aspired to go. I'd had my run in the NWA. Well, yeah. it's WCW. Yeah. Things didn't work out. I had to go to the big leagues. It was a bad spot on the roster, yeah. but nonetheless, a spot on the roster. Yeah. Well, the thing about it is, is that it, with WCW it was never the NWA. It just no, no, no. It whole, wasn't the whole thing. Whole different. The prestige apart. wasn't there. No, the and, the, yeah. the whole atmosphere. Everything changed. Yeah, I mean, and Steve, North Texas State. Yeah, I've, I've done all my 
all my stuff. He, <laughs> he's, he's a guy. He like he likes the Cowboys. He likes everybody down there. Um, but uh, in Dallas, right? And uh, I didn't meet him until WCW. But you wrestled yeah. in Dallas for a while, right? Before you came into Atlanta. Yeah. And uh, you know he grew up in that whole. I mean, if you're from Texas. That whole Von Eric tradition and the Lothario and Wahoo. I mean, man, those guys were big time stars. In Texas, huge, yeah, big time. A lot of people don't understand how hot those Von Erichs were. And don't get me wrong, I saw you wrestle uh, David. I saw you wrestle Kerry. I saw you wrestle all those yeah. guys. And and you know how over they were. Oh. And, and and David was a pretty good worker. Yeah. And Kerry got rest. And so was was a decent worker, but very you know people just love that guy. But they were man. They, they, as, they were as big as anybody uh, that was in the business in Texas. Exactly. And, and Keith Mitchell was the guy behind it to put together. And then, Michael, first of all, Michael Hayes comes in. Michael Hayes says, let's give these guys some music. Right. You know, Kamala came came to New York with music from Dallas. That music didn't come from New York. Yeah. Hay, Hayes threw that together with, with Keith Mitchell. Then they made that video, as you know, Steve, of Kerry riding that god dang horse, yep, yep. that Palomino on the yep. beach to uh, the theme, the Rocky theme, yep. in the loincloth and the yep. hair and all. I mean, they, they also had that training video of him yeah. uh, running a white snake. Here I go again, running mm -hmm. down the beach in the gym, pumping iron. Yeah. I had those guys built up. Hey, man, you, you, you brought up Michael P.S. Hayes. I know this is your podcast, but WrestleMania 32 is going to be in Dallas, Texas this got, year. He's got to get it The up Fabulous Freebirds, yeah. Michael yeah. Hayes, don't go in, into the uh, WWE Hall of Fame this year. I will be flabbergasted, bamboozled, and confused because those guys deserve to be in the Hall of Fame. And I'm asking you, as a Hall of Famer yourself, do the Freebirds belong in the Hall of Fame or not? Well, here, here's how strongly I feel about it, okay? Number one, 2011, the year that they inducted um, Sean, right? right? Atlanta, Georgia. Right. Aaron Anderson should have gone in as a single. Right. Okay? But my feeling. Yeah. And the Freebirds should have gone in there. They were well, huge in Atlanta. I mean, because, you know, Bad Street, Atlanta, yeah, GA, yeah, yeah. built themselves from there. Are you kidding? They were huge yeah. on, the, on, the, on the Super Channel. We're talking about, though, with this year, do you think the Rebel flag thing is going to hurt their chances? Oh, no. Nah. Piss on the Rebel flag. That ain't going to hurt their chances of getting into the Hall of yeah, Fame. Yeah, it, it's long overdue. He's yeah. got to go in. No, I agree it's overdue. I just wonder how do I mean, they that, show that the thing, video. No, no, no. You ain't got to put that in any of the video footage, you know, all that. That stuff, and I can understand that the, the stuff behind the flag, but this was back in the day. Right. I'll tell you what, back in about 1987, when I was mm -hmm. in North Texas State, I used to pay my hard earned money to go to Von Eric, go, go to the uh, sports Sport in Dallas, Dallas, Texas. Yeah. And man, here comes uh, Michael PSAs, and he had that rebel flag robe on. And, <laughs> yeah. and I'm not endorsing this back then. Yeah. I'm talking about 1987. Yeah. And he had that, that sequin robe on, he had his hair going. and Hell, the entrance alone was worth the 10 bucks out there. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I ain't yeah. seen him work yet. Yeah. Right. And yeah. they get a damn set of steam on yeah. him, Von Eric. So yeah. uh, with with uh, with respect to all the, the rebel flag, you know. Controversy. Controversy going on. You know, again, I understand everybody's sensitivity towards that. I'm just talking about, no, just because that was part of their gimmick back in the day, it should not impede their progress as far as being in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, one of the rules about our podcast is we don't talk about politics. I don't either, bro. No, 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 I mean, I really don't. No, I mean, I, I don't think about it. Yeah, if, 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 if we, if, you know, if we can't talk about wrestling without having to worry about something that happened yeah, yeah. 20 years ago. There's no, but kind of right. But yeah, but just but as part of the imagery, I just yeah. think you ex nay that from the yeah. package and you're good. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I do too. But I mean, most assuredly, I thought they would have gone on before. But you look, when you look at what they did in the ring, Michael Hayes was one of the. People don't give that guy credit enough for being a great talker mm -hmm. and a hell of a damn great commentator. Uh, and, and his work was good, but Gordy was the worker out right. of that bunch. Gordy Unreal. was the big heater, bully, and, of course, Buddy Jack Roberts. Because yeah. every everybody in the building just knew, yeah. out, of, out of all three of them, at least I can kick his ass. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's why I had yeah. to yeah. yeah. And, of course, you had P.S. stirring the pot and yeah. talking all that trash. And then you have Gordy. With those facials and everything, yeah. and he'd say something. Three hundred pound Terry yeah. Gordy. I mean, yeah. you've seen, you've yeah. been to probably many tours of Japan with him. Oh my God, that yeah. guy was yeah. gold. Yeah. I wish he was still around. Yeah, you know the thing of it is, it, it, and Terry's like a lot of the guys that just, you know, and we can sit here like Steve and I, because we've certainly had our time, right? Right. You either, it's you know, this is what Kip, you know, something a different subject, but along the lines of Terry Gordy and Kurt and all these other guys, right? You make your own choice. You can't blame it on the business. No. Nah. Either you fall for it or you don't. And Terry, who loved the drink, but yeah. he had the other gimmick, the other side too. And I mean, it 
And speaking of Japan, I mean, he almost died twice over there before he actually did die. Right. It, it's just sad, you know. And and but but that's you know, you, everyone's to throw it down on the WWE. That isn't the way it works. As a we fan. all did, you know, we all put in the same time. We all bled. We all sweat. We all traveled. It's an individual choice, you know. Right. And so I, I mean, I just I feel bad about it. But to make no mistake about it, Terry Gordy was a big star here and in Japan. Yeah. yeah he. He tagged up with uh, Stan Hansen over there. They were, yeah, yeah. and then Steve Williams later on. Yeah, they were great together. Yeah. All the ladies love slick Rick. You know they love mutations. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. All right, you've been scouting players for your season-long fantasy football team for months, and now you can put that knowledge to the test every week at DraftKings.com. They're America's favorite one-week fantasy football site where you can start the season by winning $2 million in one week. Rick, this is the biggest fantasy football contest ever. It is by far. DraftKings.com. I am so honored that they are part of the Woo Nation podcast. Here's what we're talking about. $10 million in prizes are up for grabs, including $2 million for first place, and one million for second place. So even if you don't win, you could still win a million bucks. Think about that, folks. That Conrad Thompson money. <laughs> oh my gosh. Two million bucks. Conrad Thompson money. DraftKings.com. Woo Nation. Get after it. Just pick your players, pile up the points, pick up your cash. That's it. You've never experienced football like this before, and this isn't fantasy as usual. This is DraftKings. Welcome to the big time. A few preseason games are still left to go before the regular season kicks off, so hurry to DraftKings.com right now and use that promo code. What is it, Rick? Get F-L-A-I-R. Flair. To play for free, win your share of the $10 million being given away on week one, just enter Flair for free entry now at DraftKings.com. That's DraftKings.com. What is it, Rick? It's F-L-A-I-R, DraftKings.com. Part of the woo, the woo, woo nation. DraftKings.com. Man. With Rick Flair. <laughs> So, I, as a fan, I always hear guys talk about Terry Gordy as being, you know, this fantastic worker. Phenomenal. But I hear the I hear the guys say that. What is it, or what was it about Terry that was so special that you, as a wrestler, could appreciate that he did different from everybody else? Well, I think I I, I stole one of my famous high spots. Well, not one of my famous. I, well, the spot from Terry Gordy. It was just send a guy in, and both guys are hitting the ropes. As you're sending a guy in, you're chasing him. Duck two close lines, catch a cross body. Yeah. Gordy used to always do that spot. And then when I saw him with the two leg braces, I was like, God dang, man, that just looks tough. That guy's beat to shreds. Maybe he needs to get out of the business. I ended up with two leg braces. Just his movements, yeah. everything was, was big, and it was played to the to the hundredth row in the way back. Uh, everything he did looked solid. It made sense. He wasn't working for the cheap pop. He was just a badass, solid cat, and he was believable. And I believe that he could beat anybody's ass in that building. That's what I thought about Bam Bam. Yeah. You know, here, here's my take on it. And I, I, I work with him a lot individually and a lot in tags, but he and the, the two, he had incredible athletic ability for a guy that didn't play college. And a guy that big. Yeah. And a guy that big, but he was Barry Windham, but yeah, 30 yeah. pounds heavier. Didn't hurt. Not a great talker. Not, not the most charismatic guy, but man, you put him in the role where Barry was. And like Barry, I mean, it would be, you know, but eventually Barry's weight caught up with him. Guys, Barry weighs 315 out. I don't know yeah. you knew that or not. No, I didn't know that. Yeah, I mean, did, did these guys, but Gordy and Barry, I mean, Barry wouldn't have to do stuff that nobody said. But Gordy that. wasn't a crowbar either. No, he, he didn't hurt Barry. I mean, yeah. geez, he couldn't, you know, you wouldn't even know they were there. Hey, man, Gordy I wouldn't hurt anybody. Not to segue off, but I, I was watching Jim Cornette sent me a bunch of DVDs. Thank you yeah. very much, Jim, from some old CWF stuff. And it was Black Jack Mulligan yeah. 30 years ago, 40 yeah, years yeah. ago. I, I don't remember. He took off his vest. Yeah. You would have thought the rock and roll just hit the hit the. Yeah, ring. yeah. The girls went eight. I know. I know. Guy. <laughs> and I'm like, this is Black Jack yeah. Mulligan. You go back when he's a good looking dude. I know, man. I was wrestling. Hundred, and I was yeah. like, I could not believe it. As a matter of fact, his opponent that night was John Studd. Yeah. It, the match was what it was. It that was, was in Charlotte. That was Charlotte yeah. territory. But God dang, I couldn't believe Mulligan got the chick pop that he got. Thick, <laughs> thick, it was nine. awesome. Thick black hair, six, yeah. nine, 300 pounds. Big rugged. Hey, 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 hey. And tougher than shit, too. Oh, ain't no doubt about that. Yeah, man. That. I yeah. watched him sucker punch Harley one time. I said, what's going on here, man? 
Well, I would say let's bring it up. Why why would uh, Black Jack sucker punch Harley? Why did he sucker punch Ronda the Giant? I saw that too. Jack had the shortest temper in the world. Okay. You had to have heard that. Okay, but but what happened with uh as 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 Slinker. You heard about Slinker, right? Yeah. Karate but, guy. But let me ask you about when he when he hit Harley, Harley's tough as nails. You backed him up. I have a thousand times. But so we, what happened? We, we're in a hotel room in Greensboro. And it's that me a great wrestling town. <laughs> Dad? That's a great wrestling town. No, the best. We always stayed too. It's ninety miles from home, but we always found her. We got us a big meeting tomorrow. Be home tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so what happened? No, he knocked Harley between two beds, and Harley couldn't get couldn't get out of it. You know what I'm saying? He he knocked him between two beds, just hauled off, just sucker punched and boom, down one Harley between two beds, and Mulligan jumped on top of him, and Mulligan's three hundred pounds. Yeah, Harley couldn't get away. He's pinned against yeah. between two big beds. So it's me, Wahoo, and somebody else trying to break it up. Finally, get it broken up, and then man, it's me, Mulligan. Wahoo and race riding back, and, and we uh, we had that Jack and I bought that tricked out uh, van, right? Van, yeah, we yeah. Did, we're always ahead of our time. Something more than we could afford, <laughs> and had everything on TVs and all that. And I'm I'm, and I'm, I'm driving, and fucking Harley Race, and I'm at Mulligan sitting next to me, and it's Wahoo, and I'm, I'm just waiting for Race to to smack him, you know? Right. I, no one hardly I did, but it never happened. I just I looked at Wahoo. I said, "Man, I don't even want to. I don't want to go home with you guys. It's going to be bad news." But it, it never happened. And, and uh, I'm telling you, and, and, and I, in all fairness, not, nothing against Harley. Jack Mulligan was tougher than hell. Yeah, yeah. He hauled off, and he looked at Murdoch one time. We were we were sitting there in at Virginia Beach, you know, on a deck of a bar. I can't think of the name of the bar, but I can't have a minute to think about it. Good. And he goes to Murdoch. Watch this. Bam. Since 1976, he nails, nails Andre. Boy, Andre came out of that chair. He grabbed him both by the scruff of their shirt, yeah. dragged him out in the water, drowned him both. Yeah, no, <laughs> killed them both. I swear to God. Straight up. Straight up, man. And I, I, and I, you know, I was watching it, walking backwards. Yeah. Because I don't want him grabbing me. <laughs> no, this is when Andre, before he, this is when he was, you That's know, when you still go pretty give, young. Give the lifeguard the hot tag. Yeah, right. <laughs> Ooh. No, but Jack was just like that. I mean, do you yeah. remember the story about Slinker, the karate guy? Yeah. I know. It's kind of like uh, the greatest <laughs> the greatest story I've ever told about this, and you've heard me tell it, because I thought for sure Luger was going to get killed. So Jack becomes an agent. George Scott is the, becomes the new booker in WCW or whatever Crockett, it was at that point, yeah. Crockett. It, but it was down in Atlanta, so they hired Jack as a booker. I mean, as an agent. So Jack's wearing a suit, sweating like hell, smoking the same old right? We're in Marietta, Cobb County. You've been many times, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> and Luger's wrestling Dutch Mantel. <laughs> Mulligan smoking a cigarette. <laughs> and Luger says to Mulligan, why would a Lex Luger wrestle, <laughs> talking about himself in the third person, you know, again to Mulligan, right? Why would a Lex Luger wrestle a Dutch Mantel? <laughs> like, like he's <laughs> nothing, right? And I looked at Mulligan, and Mulligan looked at me and went, <laughs> he threw it out, he walked out the door. Well, I'm just thinking, he's just going to haul off and murder Luger for even asking him. He just, I said, what happens? I can't do this. I can't put up with these guys. I'll, down quit. I'll kill somebody, he said. And he would. That's, you know, that was the thing. Right. You know, who, but who would, I mean, that's where, that's where Luger got so much heat with guys. Why would Lex Luger, okay? It's why would I, <laughs> you know, if, if that, if that's the question. Hello, it's because the booker wants you to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> By the way, you got to work sometime on TV. Yeah, you know, it's, it's a win. Yeah. You're not going to get a chance to work with Ric Flair every <laughs> single night <laughs> yeah. of your damn career. Yeah. I mean, and you only did for two years of straight. Yeah. Yeah. I know that was, the, but that was, I, I knew that he wasn't going to be. It. Hey man, you mentioned a guy a while ago. Um, God dang, uh, Dick Murdoch. Yeah, man, that dude could work his oh, ass my God. when he wanted to. What mm -hmm. was his deal? Because I mean, he had a great career, and I have nothing but respect for him. But I mean, he could he could have done better than he did. Well, here's the deal. You know, Dick was uh he was almost too good. And that's uh, and when I started in the business, the three guys that were my favorite were Ray, who is still my all time favorite, Murdoch, and Harley Race. Okay, um, you know, what I mean, but my favorite. You say Ray? You talking Ray Stevens? Ray Stevens, gotcha. Harley Race, gotcha. and Dick Murdoch. Because okay. Dick Murdoch could really work. He and Dusty were a hell of a team. The they, outlaws, they, man. Yeah, they, yeah. Right he, and Dick would, but Dick, he, along with Terry, right? Um, I didn't see Terry till later on, but Murdoch, 
had that ability to add a little humor to it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like in St. Louis, I remember one night when that town where the where you were one in a downhill stretch, so figure four, a sleeper. I mean, it's the greatest wrestling town in the world, right? So one night he took a bump over the top rope, and I'm watching him. We're all standing back there at the keel, and he walked into the turnbuckle and walked into the boat and took a bump and fell down. I went, <laughs> and I said, I said, that's great. I mean, that, it made me laugh, right? Yeah. It's Dick Murdoch, right? He could do that, you know, already, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and then the Terry Funk came yeah, along yeah, yeah. the yeah. punches that were going nowhere, right? You know, but all those guys got that from Murdoch. Murdoch was phenomenal. And Murdoch, you know, like, like Nick Bockwell said to me, it was, it was, you, need, you need to learn this as a kid. You know, I've always, you know, I respect you guys. And it was work I respected. He said, there's only two guys in the business that can come off the top rope on your throat. Just so you know, one of them is Dick Murdoch and the other one's Ray Stevens. And that came from Bachman Gold. I mean, right. And he he was throwing everybody into it at that point in time. Right. And, you know, the only two that ever came off on top of it were Dick. Yeah. Nobody ever asked me to, you know what I mean? But, I mean, you, you love a guy, you know, because Stephen, you couldn't even feel it, but Dick Murdoch was 270 pounds. Right. Never worked out. And you know how he died, Steve? You know the story? No. You know, he all those guys, were like, they love rodeoing, right? And he was, had his place in Amarillo. He had a trailer. Got divorced. You know, we know how that goes. Yeah. We live in a trailer, you know, with a, like a little property there in Amarillo, about 15 minutes from Terry's ranch. And uh, he was rolling in the afternoon, um, you know, to going out and riding the bulls and all that stuff. Do I came home, walked in his trailer, opened the Coors Light, boom, had a heart attack and died right there instantly. Wow. Yeah. So that would have, I mean, that's, you know, I hear about all these guys going, you know, for me, you know, it's either got to be a woman or something like that or <laughs> talking to you like last night or right here. <laughs> <when there's, laughs> yeah. I, I, I wouldn't do well being sick in a hospital. Dusty wouldn't have either. Piper yeah. wouldn't have. I mean, we're not made to sit there in a hospital for six months with some kind of a stiff. And I mean, I, I feel I'm really sympathetic to that. I, I saw something that I'll never, ever forget, and it scared me to death. When Magnum TA was in that car wreck. Yeah. Yeah. I was in Birmingham and that for wrestling Ron Fuller. I flew in and it was a huge, huge deal in Charlotte. I mean, they had cop cars all around uh, CMC, which is the Carolina Medical Center, which yeah. they, but he was so popular and wrestling was so big then at eighty six. Oh dude, I remember how he, yeah, he was on his yeah. way to being a megastar. Yeah, and I walked I walked in to see him and he was this is the days where the life support was at Iron Lung. Right. Oh and big the big and, two, right, yeah. It was like this. Like this, right? And he couldn't, he didn't, he couldn't move anything for 30 days, right? He was in his, and the only way he could communicate was to touch this little tongue depressor, right? Right. To get him to come, you know. And on the weekends, you know, wow. the weekend warrior deal, you know, right? My parents had health care issues on the weekend because it's you're getting the people that are just there to, you know, to make a few bucks. And I mean, I, I was horrified. I said, God, you know, I just couldn't do that. I, I don't think I could take it here. And I mean, that's, uh, I see Terry, I just saw him at, at Dusty's funeral and I, and I see him once in a while and, uh, man, he's, he's made it, but it's, it's tough. He just dragged himself along. But what do you think speculation had that, uh, car wreck never happened? Had he never got, uh, he would have been a world champion eventually. He, he would have been, uh, just one of, he would have been a big, one of the biggest stars of all time. I think. Yeah. Uh, he, he, he had the look. Him. Yeah. He had the fire, the, the, just that way that move forward mm -hmm. he was the most technical guy in the ring uh and, and many haven't nor, nor am i but man the people man you were, well he had the look he was incredibly you know, handsome good looking yeah. dude yeah yeah you know it's funny Tully had some great great oh, matches yeah. and a great few yeah yeah he had some great stuff with everybody yeah. but man he yeah. it seemed like he was gonna be that next yeah. big guy I'll, I'll tell you a funny story because people don't know this either so crockett is a guru they bought this bigger office over off carmel road they moved over from the office they kept the land and the building on South Boulevard and moved over to this big place, 30,000 square feet, put in rings and all that, right? So, old <laughs> Gene, this is when Gene was breaking guys in, right? So, do you know the story about the mask guy coming in and all that? No. no okay, so, did you ever know Gene Anderson? No, I hey. got a chance to meet him. Yeah, well, you you, you, you would love it. Hey, I <laughs> mean, so, this guy walks in with his dad to the office and just the same day, his magnum comes right to break to get a tryout. So, what Oli did and Gene, they'd run these guys ragged up and down stadium steps. You've heard the stories, right? Oh and yeah, then, yeah. And beat the crap out of them. Well, this guy, this guy comes walking into the office with his dad, and I was there getting him. My, you picked our paycheck, and this guy goes, "My son wants to try out for wrestling." 
And Gene says to him, well, take off the mask. And the, and the kid goes, no, I'm not taking my mask off. I'm like, no, I am. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Okay, well. <laughs> I mean, we're the office. It's okay <laughs> if we know who you <laughs> are. No, no, no. <laughs> you'll get it. They went back to the ring, and he wouldn't take off the mask. Well, man, and they, <laughs> they crap out that poor kid, man. I mean, just that's the way it was, right? So that afternoon, Terry Taylor comes in and Bud Sawyer is down there with him, right? And they beat up Magnum so bad he came walking out and he saw me in the parking lot and he said, God, you know, I'm a big fan here. He said, what do you think I should do? Bud Sawyer and Ole and Gene beat the shit out. I said, if you go home, you'll never make it. You got, you got to come back tomorrow. And he did, but yeah. they, he paid the price, man. And he, and he was a good amateur wrestler. He wrestled in college. Yeah. Terry did, you know I what I mean? That. Yeah, but I mean, you know, he wasn't a national question, yeah, champion. But, but Rick, when you're in a situation like that, yeah. you're not really instructed to fight back. No, right, I know that's the point. But Bud you're there Sawyer taking ass Oh yeah, 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 that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. and, and, no, and it, I, I didn't like that. I mean, yeah. I, you know, I, I I didn't like taking liberties of the guys. I didn't like watching it because they were, you know, they don't know they can fight back. You know, right? And, I, and you know, like like I'll give you an example. Eddie Graham was famous for that. He'd have Bob Roop and these guys kick the crap out of these guys. You know. And one and one day he asked Briscoe to do it. Briscoe said, "I don't do that." Right. And Eddie and him had a falling out. Jack wouldn't do that kind of stuff. Right. But that was their deal. And then then you know who, who broke them a habit of that? <laughs> a guy named Dick Slater walked in the office and wanted to become a wrestler. And they told Roop to soften him up. <laughs> Roop was laying cold in a pool of blood. Slater was that tough man. The rest is history. Dick Slater was. You would have loved him, man. Hundred miles an hour down the road, he could work. He was just like Terry. Tougher than hell, boy. Ask that remember that kid uh, that played football for the Oakland Raiders, Matusak. Yeah. <laughs> he beat up Matusak on the beach. He sent up. He went up to his hotel room on spring break, and Slater was in high school. Matusak was at the University of Tampa with Orndorff at the same time, right? So he was hitting on Slater's girlfriend. Slater beat the crap out of him. He went up to his hotel room, and Slater said, "Write me a note apologizing to me before you come out." <laughs> True wow. story. It didn't mess, nobody messed around with Slater, man. But I'd always heard about that from his uh, Mid-South uh, days down here in Watts territory with some of the things that he did. But yeah, he put, it, one, he put one of our mutual friend's head in the yeah, toilet. I, but, won't, I won't say who. I know, but, but, but see, that's what I'd always heard, and I never got really uh, over sweet get, brunt. get in the ring with Diggy Slater. Yeah. But, and, you know, he was a damn good wrestler, but, you know, he never reached like a big megastar status. Well, he had that accident. He was in that car wreck with Terry and what happened? Blanchard and all. They were, they were driving in a van. And uh, this is like 1986 or so, and terrible car wreck with Terry with uh, Terry Funk. We talked about it, and he suffered a terrible concussion, and, and a spinal injury. Uh -huh. And you, he never, he was never the same again. Oh, see, I never, I never knew that. Yeah. I'd always heard that Diggy Slater was yeah. one tough son. Well, whole point was he ever, was he ever? I mean, you know, he he back because they put him. Who was he together Bob, with when they were the Hardliners? Bob. Oh, that was Dick Murdoch. Dick Murdoch, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the, yeah but that, that was a good old school tag team, but. They didn't do no, but that was the infamous story where I was alarmed and I said, look out the curtain here because in the Steiners ain't going to stretch Dick Slater. No. They, and they hated working with them, but they hated, they, you know, those old guys, I don't want to work with them, but there was no Frankensteiners. There was no belly to belly. <laughs> yeah, 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 Dick yeah. Slater in the ring. And you know what? I got to rewatch that match on YouTube. Because I, I remember that match, but I don't remember the match in my head. No, you and I, I was, I'm sure you heard the conversation. Aaron and I were standing there. It was pay-per-view, wasn't it? No, I don't think it was. It might have been. I think it was just taping, but they hated working with older guys. And, you know, and they, in, 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 in all fairness, but, I mean, I've seen Slater. The best example of Dick Slater, it was Slater and Tenru, the famous Japanese yeah. wrestler against Brody and Hanson. Wow. That was the first time I saw how Dick Slater was because Brody and Hanson, this is in... This is in the Budokan, right, in Japan. Right. Sold out. And those guys, that's when they were on top of their game. Yep. Brother Slater didn't fucking take a deep breath. And he, to my language, he didn't take a step backwards. And Tenru, you know, they're trained to die before they do anything. But <laughs> nobody sold nothing for 30 minutes. <laughs> but they didn't see, he was, they weren't, and Slater wasn't afraid of them at all. As a matter of fact, I mean, in my, in my estimation, they were thinking, you know, let's take it easy on Slater. Yeah, because he yeah. could he had that punch, man. I mean, he could knock anybody out. I've seen him do it. You know, Steve, did you work in Japan besides WWE shows? No, no, yeah. Well, I mean, I went uh, I went on three tours. At one time, it was a three week tour. That's when I tore my tricep, and then I went on two like a little single shot. So, 
three three trips over there all together, but that one trip was three weeks long. And I remember that was myself, Arn, and I'll leave some people out of this. Cause, 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 oh, Ron Simmons was with you guys. Ron Simmons. Yeah. Ron, 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 Ron damn near went off the deep end. Yeah. Pete Malenko, Chris Benoit. Uh, Forgetty Guerrero was on that tour. Yeah. Haku. Yeah. And there was a couple other guys, but I, I remember... Uh, or it was a Barb. Barb was on there. Yeah. And so, man, like me and, me and Arn, we're used to being over in the United States. A lot of those guys, and Rod Simmons wasn't used to going over to Japan, but uh, all those other guys that I mentioned were going back and forth to Japan right. all the time. So they were used to it. So, like, Arn and me are like, Arn was miserable. We're man. used to being on, on the road. Yeah. Oh, we're used to being on the road in the States. Yeah. yeah. So, me and Arn were drinking like beans. <laughs> oh, <beer and, laughs> oh, we maintained our sanity. Yeah. yeah. And of course, you know, the third night into the tour, I jump off a top turnbuckle. A Japanese guy moves. He was supposed to. Bent my arm up too far. And tore my tricep off my elbow. Oh God! I of course, I couldn't that. go home because yeah. you just got to work hurt, right? Yeah. So they put me in some tags, some six mans, and stuff like that. I'll never forget. It was me, Arn Anderson, and Ron Simmons working against three Japanese guys. I can't remember. And all of a sudden, it was me and Arn on the apron, and Ron was in there, and he was on fire. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Bing, bang, yeah. boom, bang. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and Arn looked at me and mm. goes, "Holy shit!" Yeah. Yeah. Right. He goes, he was, <laughs> Arn says, "I'm glad enough." I'm I'm not a Japanese. <laughs> yeah. No, hey, dude, Ron was pretty tough, too, you know. That's for due respect yeah. to all the people in Japan. Yeah. I'm just saying, dude, when, when Ron was on fire and slinging people around like yeah. a pinball, you couldn't stop him. No. No, Ron was, uh, you know, like that, what I was going to say about Kerry Von Eric earlier, but the two guys that could always bench press 500 any day of the week yeah. were Kerry Von Eric, which I've seen him do 100 times, and Ron Simmons. Yeah. No matter how much Crown Royal Ron drank, yeah. he could always bench press. He'd come in and warm up with 315 for 10. Yeah, those are the kind of guys that just pissed you off. Yeah, I know. Because I mean, I'd be at the gym, you know, working out like a son bitch. For a while, Tony Atlas trained with me. Oh, yeah. People don't know that. You know, Tony Atlas would drink some beer. Now, he could not drink me, but we'd go to the gym the next day, and sure enough, there would be Tony. Yeah. 15 on the bar to start off with. Yeah. Jump right to 405. King, king, king. I'm like, I'm over here struggling with two and a quarter. I mean, he's ridiculous. Yeah. But Tony was always just naturally a strong guy. He was Mr. Uh... USA. Well, Mr. USA, but he was Mr. Uh, number one. He was a state champion of wrestling in the state of Virginia. Oh, I didn't know that. He was a good amateur wrestler. And I mean, hey, did you know the story that uh, one time Paul Orndorff, uh, Mr. Yeah. USA, he, Tony Atlas. He scrapped out of Tony. Well, I know, but there was another guy in the car, and they got to an argument, and they said, pull his car over, and I'll be damned if Tony Atlas and Paul Orndorff went at it, and Paul Orndorff bit off part of Tony oh, Atlas's oh, ear. Yeah. And then so uh, they were working from Mid-South. So Tony missed the shot because his ear was messed up. And, that and was it Matt Morton? Yeah. Well, so anyway, but but Bill Watts fined him because yeah. he couldn't work that night. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Paul Orndorff was a tough guy, too. I mean, yeah. No, yeah. Brandon Bull. Everybody yeah. used to travel yeah. with Paul. Yeah. Oh, he used yeah. to help with it. But yeah. It and he, but, he had a short fuse, too. But nobody yeah. saw, nobody really saw how short that fuse was. But we put up a lot until Leon gave him some crap that day. And he was wearing shower shoes like these. Boom, he's got cowboy boots on. Lee had to still be laying this there. Is good. That story, Rick, happened when I had my tricep injury. So I was down in Douglasville, Georgia, 25 miles away from uh, the television tape in there, mm -hmm. Center Stage. Center Stage. And here comes, you know, Brian. Oh, yeah. I love the guy. He, he got on the phone, called me first thing. Kid, you're not going to believe it. He always calls me kid. Yeah. Kid, you're not going to believe this. Uh, Paul Orndorff almost killed uh van vader yeah and he's wearing flip-flops yeah if he'd been wearing a pair of high techs he'd have killed him yeah you know because yeah. he put the boots well you wouldn't have flip flops to him. no paul's tough i mean yeah. like, uh, a lot of people that you know atlas i i never i never saw that part of tony where tony would get into a verbal jealous with someone like that i would more see a guy like you know bud sawyer wanted to fight all the time and matt Bourne, who thought he was tough until arm beat the crap out of, you know arm beat the crap out of matt Bourne. um did you see the vader Orndorff thing. Yeah, I was right. Well, I was right next door. I didn't see it, but I saw I saw Vader laying on the floor, and I heard everybody screaming. And I saw Paul walking out the door. He looked at me and said, "I'm sorry, I couldn't take more shift than that guy." Kevin Sullivan says he did it with his bad arm. Is that? I mean, yeah, he did. He was he, 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 the one that dropped him. Sullivan says. Was oh, I don't know about arm. that. Which, which to me like, is like, holy shit, well, that's he, another level of bad ass. I, you probably saw Paul recently too. He just, you know, has beaten for stage four cancer. I I didn't recognize him, but. Yeah. No, in his day, Paul, they would, it was a different business back then. Right. I mean, you know, Horner was around back when, you know, he was, it was him and Snooker against me and Valentine when Mulligan and all those guys are running around, you know, and yeah. we were all in the building one night, Norfolk again, sold out, right? It's Jack and Barry, Barry's first match against Ole and Gene, right? Yeah. And, uh, 
and it was me and uh, Valentine against Snooker and uh, Orndorff. And we, I had that two hit of coin. I told you the story because I hated taking that splash from Jimmy. Jimmy was about two seventy, right? Right. So I flipped the coin with and Valentine, rock huh? And rock hard. Yeah, I'd, I'd rather take like a jump, cushion Yeah, noise, the jumping you know? pile driver, man. I just so I felt out that with taking that splash every night that I was taking a jumping pile driver. <laughs> And we weren't winning, it didn't matter, but I hated that splash. He was killing me. So here we were watching the match, and the, 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 the curtain is, we knew there was going to be a problem with this. Because Jack already slapped only a TV one time. And so we were looking at the curtain, and Barry got in the ring, and everything looked great. All of a sudden, Jack didn't like it. Jack just jumped jumped through the rope, went over, smacked Gene, slapped Ole, and grabbed Barry, bottom down, and walked to the dressing room and said, You stay here. And he said, he looked at said, you guys come in here. They, they walked down the hall. The Bulligan was there. Gene and Holy went down the hall. They went for a walk. <laughs> yeah, it was, everybody knows that story. It was he, Jack was just, he was bingo, right? Yeah. I mean, but I say that in a good way, but he just went, he was easy to get along with, you know? Just, and, and never drank a lot or anything, smoked and that, but boy, he had a, a bad temper, man. So Steve Rick was saying, you know, he really dreaded taking a splash from Superfly. Was there a move you didn't really look forward to? No, I worked with him a lot. I I didn't like it at 270. <laughs> 220 was doable. But that splash, I don't care who it is. Eddie, it's not going to be Eddie Guerrero who weighed 190 pounds every night, you know. But I can't think of anybody's finish that really terrified me because I, I never had to take the Steiner finish to flip off. Oh, jeez, I know. I never had to take the uh, the thing from the Road Warriors. I mean, it just, I really never had to take a bad finish from anybody yeah. that, that I, I hated doing. So yeah. I can't really recollect yeah, that. I hated that thing too. You know, I was watching the other day. But how were you about, let me ask you a question, Rick. How were you about uh, sending receipts back? Because I, I always work snug and, but guys always took care of me. But, you know, like I've, I've told a story many times when we was over in Europe, boss man clocked, clocked me about seven times and finally I lit his ass up. And that was really the only receipt I'd really ever sent back in a ring. In your illustrious career, um, and I, I, I guys can, had a lot of respect yeah, for you. But I, I mean, can tell you this. I never sent one back because I don't think I was tough enough. <laughs> and if someone was potato on me, they were pretty tough. Yeah. Does it make sense? Yeah. Yeah, I don't, well, I mean, Brody. Well, a lot of those guys you just named, it doesn't. Yeah, I mean, we all, all, we all make some mistakes in that. But, I mean, I don't remember anybody uh, taking a liberal with me ever. Um, uh, but then, about Vader probably had the fact that you were the you were Ric Flair going for How about Vader? Vader's oh, oh I, did, I did have to. Give, I had to yeah. give Vader a receipt in that title match in '93. Right. Yeah, for the because what happened was, it was supposed to be Vader and Sid, right? And then Sid and Arn had the dispute in Europe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They both came home. I was there. They fired Sid. They fired Arn, and that's when I went call Bischoff and I said, "You fire Arn, you're, I'm gone too." Right. So anyway, they because it was in Charlotte, they put mm -hmm. me in the match. He didn't want to do, do the favor, right, right. and he didn't want to do it. So, yeah, I did have it all. But hey, was that the long-ass match y'all had on, <clears> on pay-per-view? Yes. That was a pretty good match. It was, it, the match yeah. came out great. Yeah. Harley was out there, but, you know, he was pounding me, and Harley looked at me and said, yeah, I remember you telling me this. Yeah, Harley said, great. He was on the floor I'm just trying to do this. I'm just trying to get along. He said, Rick. So I started firing back. I, can watch, I watched it. I watched yeah, it the other day. I told yeah. him, I said, hell, that match is better than I thought it was. It was. It was yeah. a good match. And uh, but I started lighting him up. Remember the next day he had the black eyes and all what that. The crowd was hot for you. Yeah, oh, he was God, beating my. He, it the thing to the ears. He wouldn't hit me here. That thing right. to the ears, you know. Well, it was those. those, those yeah, yeah. I was like yeah, yeah. 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 Like, no, Harley said, "What are you doing?" I said, "I just trying to get along." He said, "You're really pissing me off." I go, "Okay, man." And so the next day he had black eyes and everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah but I think I'd already seen at that point. I think I, he'd already been dropped to the floor by Orndorff. So. I figured it wasn't, he couldn't hurt me too bad. It's <laughs> <laughs> <Barely, laughs> snake in a flip flop. Yeah, yeah. But I'll tell you something else about Leon. I took that thing off the top rope yeah. from him a hundred times. He's never hurt anybody. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, the, the funniest thing I got to tell you, you got, you, you have to remember this, Steve, is when Kevin but, but Sullivan. Before you go out, but I got to give props to, to, to Leon because I love the guy. And he's one of the greatest big men in history. Yeah. Stuff. So I don't want to come off like we was running. No, no, no. I, 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 I love Leon. No, I introduced Leon at the Hall of Fame this year. Yeah. I'm, and I said, thanks so much. I mean, because he, he was a big star in Japan. Yeah, yeah, No, yeah. we're just talking about yeah, yeah. thinking it's, it's nothing against Leon. This is his No, no, no. Yes, I just want to make yeah, sure. Yeah, no, Leon, you know, I just yeah. said, Leon never, ever hurt me one time. We'll be right back with the limousine ride. Jeff Pride can steal a wheel and son of a gun and it's going to repair. Oh, on Woo Nation.
Welcome to Play It, a new podcast network featuring radio and TV personalities talking business, sports, tech, entertainment, and more. Play it at play.it. The greatest talker in the history of the business is behind the mic once again. This is Woo Nation with Ric Flair. Kevin Sullivan, our, my, our friend, the rocket yeah. scientist, right? He said, handicap, you and Arn, Daytona, Ocean Center. Do you remember that? Against Leon? Yeah. And, he, and you know, here's Kevin. He's like the Wolverine. You'll attack his legs. Arn will attack you. <laughs> right? We got the right. And, of course, Vader overrides. <laughs> like over the years, the things that have made me laugh. We <laughs> gave it the thing to me, right? And then Arn had to feed in and. And I was laughing so hard because Arn was so mad. But I said, I didn't this thing. I was just on the committee. <laughs> he dropped it up on top of Arn. And Arn. You're like, Arn's standing like, dude, how did you get me involved in this shit again? You booked for that? I, I didn't book it. Sullivan did it. But he, he goes to me and Arn. He, goes, he told me and Arn. He goes, you guys would be like the Wolverine. <laughs> the enforcer, right? Love like, when guys spin these ideas, they make them sound. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, we got, you're the victim. Yeah, now he beats both of us, right? <laughs> Jesus. And then, um, so, um, <laughs> I'm trying to think of where I was going with that because, oh, God, Aaron and I, we just been, oh, that, the other time was when Aaron and I against Kevin Green and um, Steve McMichael, right? And so, Steve and Michael could actually work, but Mongo could work, right? Kevin never got it. <laughs> Kevin was like, Five Maxwell talent. Oh my God. So we got the heat on. Tough dude, too. Oh, yeah. We got the heat on Mongo, right? <laughs> we, we gave, gave Kevin the tag. And Kevin's like walking around all day going, I don't want to suplex. I want to suplex. I go, okay. We didn't practice that. Day. No, I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. So <laughs> he gets the tag and boom, 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 shoots me in. About kills me with reverse elbow, right? Suplexes me, and that's where Arn feeds in. And I was so over there going, thank God, I, you know, making sure I'm alive, right? And when Arn came to the ropes, Kevin Green got the three points to edge, and he hit Arn with a four. Oh, and wow. It almost killed Arn. And it, he was looking at me like, I'm going to kill you. I said, I didn't do anything to do with this. Oh, because it was just, you know, Arn and I were always the guys, you know, go, take him, right? I mean, oh. But how fun was yeah. it to ride down the road with Arn? Oh, the After best. an extravaganza yeah. like that, and to hear him with a couple of yeah. beers oh. and recant the story. The, because the he's best. one of the funniest, most sarcastic guys and the quickest witted guys in the history of the Unreal. Business. Unreal. The greatest line I tell everybody was around the, on the Falcon one night, and he and Luger would joust all the time. And so, um, and Luger would call Arn a Super Bowl. You know, he's bouncing around for yeah. you, right? And, and look at look one time and said, you know, <laughs> if I could have <laughs> those chompers in my hand, General Patton could have another set of pearl hand revolvers. <laughs> he goes, you're an orthodontist dream. <laughs> he would just always, I mean, he was too much. <laughs> then he would imitate Luger, you know, honk, yeah. honk. You know, you remember he... Yeah. Boom, honk, yeah. boom, honk. You remember him doing that? The punch rate jumping to give himself a tug. I don't know what the deal was with that. But, oh, yeah, you would, would, he could drive. He drove a little bit crazy. Yeah. But everybody, he was just dynamite, man. Yeah, he's a funny. Well, he just had iron over his house. And well, iron I think would be in WCW back in the uh, center stage TV tapings was, you know, they had uh, two dressers there would be a monitor. And everybody in the back would be glued to the monitor. You know, back in, the monitors were like 10 by 10 inches. Big. I mean, a little bitty some bitch. And so Arn, everybody's dead silence or, you know, ooh, ah, or whatever. And Arn was like the, the voice, the commentary, mm -hmm. and just zinger after zinger. After yeah, yeah, zinger. yeah. He's a, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, the more beer he had, the funnier was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, it's funny. He goes, um, you know, we're sitting there, and he was in the booking committee, and I, and I was trying to get out of wrestling Hogan again. And they're all going, yeah, it'd be great. And so Arn, Arn's analogy was I wanted to kill him. He goes, it'll be like Florida, Florida State. You remember Florida? Yeah. Florida lost. Right. 30 during the season. They went to the national championship in the Sugar Bowl, and then Florida beat Florida State 31 30, right? Well, 31 30 is what Florida State beat by during the regular season. Went to the Sugar Bowl, and Florida beat back. He said, You know, this time they'll fully expect, they'll never think you're going to win, and you will. 
I said, Arn, I'm never going to win here. I'm never beating Hogan. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> but that was Arn's analogy. I wanted to kill him again. Florida, Florida State, me, Hogan. What are you talking about, man? Uh, so many good times. Uh, so, Steve, were you in uh, WCW by the time Rick went to WWF, or had you not made your way up yet? Man, did I go to WWF before you, or did you go up there before me? No, well, not, I, I, I was in WCW. Like, uh, he left in 91. Uh, you, he wasn't were, in the business. He was still in college in 91. No, no, no. no, no, no. I, I broke in in 89. I was 90 rookie of the year. I was still down in uh, USWA till about 91 and a half or two, and that's when I got a call from Dusty, and that's when I came in. Okay, so he had already left. Were you? I, I don't think you were there when I first got in. Uh, I came back in January of 93. I came back, came in, back? in 90, 92. Okay. 93. 93. Yeah, 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 because yeah, you were down to Orlando TV taping. Yeah. Then, I don't think I don't think you were there when I initially got there, but then you came back and yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was um I just I came back and that's when the thing happened with Oli. Dude, I that's so damn long ago. It's really yeah. I remember something. Yeah, I've forgotten. I mean that that's that T V taping and after it reminded me so much when I got to T N A the little run that I had there. You know, you're working in front of a crowd that's paid be it's just yeah, part of the, the yeah, general yeah. It's a part of a ticket yeah, yeah, that yeah. In, oh, includes the you. theme park yeah. and it's yeah. yeah you know it's like tna you're not even rest you can't gauge you know like I mean, i'm wrestling kurt angle right and people are and anybody can have a match with kurt right sure and at tna but you you know you'd have to have a guy like him or sting to have a match because the people were not conditioned to be there they were just people in the theme park they said hey let's go watch wrestling you know, it's all no no allegiance to anybody. Didn't really get it. Just making noise, and and I said, yeah, I just looked one time at the, the, the Dixie Carter. I said, you're never going to be able to get a grip on your product until you get in front of a live audience that they're paying admission to come see your ticket. I mean, then they started going. It has an invested in interest in the talent that's performing in the ring, in in order to get behind or or boo somebody. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was Jesus just Christ. It was paying them if they yeah, that if they don't know who nobody is. What really makes a shit? Well, that just did. And I felt that the first time I got there, they, they know who I was. They knew who Hogan was, obviously. They knew Kurt, you know, because of our exposure right. from WWE. You know, well, and all the worst that. thing is to watch two guys go out there and work their asses off and nobody gives a shit because they don't know who they are. Yeah. And so they're just going through the mechanics of yeah. having a match. And if, if the crowd's not going to be invested, every time you do something, you do something to yeah. elicit a response and go accordingly. Yeah. And if nobody ain't doing shit because... If they don't care, it's just, it, it's it's hard. You feel sorry for the guys out there having to put in the work and nobody cares. Yeah, exactly. And it, it's like, when I got there, I mean, AJ Styles could work, as, he could work like Shawn Michaels. I don't know why WWF don't hire Styles right now. I don't know. He could work like, like, like uh, he's never going to be able to sell like that. But mechanically, he's he's Shawn Michaels. I mean, I mean, well, yeah, I would put him on a Shawn Michaels level. But man, No, no, no. The, but stuff, I mean, the but, stuff that he can do in the ring, yeah. as talented as he is, yeah. I believe the kid deserves a run in the WWF. Yeah, no, I didn't say he was Shawn Michaels, but I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. The, the, I never seen him work like out there. The kid could do anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's got a good body on him. I've never he's good enough size. He's badass. Yeah, really nice kid. And, do you uh, think it's just because of the TNA stain, so to speak? Well, he's not even there. I, 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 I think he, that's part of it. Yeah. But I think, man, why yeah. not go out there and cherry pick some of those guys? Yeah. Because some of them go. I mean, here's the thing. When, when you look at the WWE roster right now, there's still a very green talent base. And mm -hmm. I'm not saying this with disrespect to anybody in the locker room, but it's a very green yeah. locker yeah. room. Man, if you can bring in a couple of vets, I mean, that dude's been around the horn for a yeah. long time. And hey, look at the recent guys that have had success there. You know, Sami Zayn, damn near a 15-year vet. Yeah. Finn Ballard's now getting Kevin ranked Owen. out 13, 14, 15 years. Kevin Owens, damn near. Seth Rollins was 10 years. Seth Rollins, okay, so Seth Rollins, 10 the years. The guys who have got, are getting yeah. over or getting yeah. good shots, it's the guys with 10 plus years experience. Yeah. They're new to the system, but they ain't new to the business. Yeah. So, hey, AJ Styles, here you go. Welcome aboard. You know, let me ask you, and I, he's heard me say this, okay, because you are like me, okay, and like a lot of other guys. But I look at um, one of the problems I have today, which is, old school thinking right but i used to tell my son this when reed was looking at wrestling and what is that everybody except for the undertaker i may i'm missing a few guys wrestled in trunks and boots okay flair anderson blanchard when i'm going back you know before your time yeah. right wharton slater 
Harley, did they wear a robe? Yeah. Did you wear a vest? Yeah. You, The Rock, Hunter, Shawn Michaels, long tights. But I mean, right. Um, and you know, so many guys. You know, well, it's not. It's getting better now, but it's these gimmicks, you know, and where it was like, you know, you when you came out, they, boom, the music. It was Steve, right? Now all the guys, and I get it, because times have changed. But nobody sold more merchandise than you. You didn't wear your three sixteen shirt to the ring. No. no, everybody wears their damn merchandise now. I mean, there's like nothing. There's no creation in in a in an outfit that like Sean at the, the chaps and all that stuff, right? And you had the vest, I had the robes. I mean, Hunter did all the stuff. But at the end of the day, it was tights. And now, I mean, the guys are. It's just like. Everybody's wearing their t-shirt. What, what, can you imagine if you wore your t-shirt, how many you would have sold? Hey, this is a true story. I, I've told you this. When I first came, got, when I first came back in 2001, and you were just there, you would just. I mean, probably just came back. Yeah, you came back, and we did, and we turned your bay face that night that I started in November of 2001. And then I wrestled, and you stayed for about another year and a half. Yeah. And then, um, <clears throat> so, but I'm in Anaheim at the pond. And I, I'm new to everybody there, right? But I knew all the guys, but I didn't know anybody in the company. <clears throat> and the guy says, man, we killed it again tonight with uh, Austin and Rock. And I go to the guy, you'll probably know this story. And I go to the guy, what do you mean? He said, well, we sold 16,000 uh, Austin t-shirts, wow. item 15,000 Rock t-shirts. I said, you're shitting me. He said, no. We do. He said, Rick, we do it every night. I said, see. You sold 16 or whatever the capacity was. Right. I mean, you, I, you know, I, I go, I said, I said, now I know that all that shit I hear about Steve making that money is true. <laughs> you and Rock were killing it, man, huh? It was. Good. I mean, I'm not asking you for a number, but no, I mean, that, this, was... this guy was volunteering this to me. He said, Rick, because, you know, Steve and I really got to know each other and we talk and, you know, and he had the greatest gimmick. I mean, Steve would go out there. We were in Buffalo one time and, the show was an afternoon show, and we got done like 7 o'clock, and he was out there, and Iron goes, let's get out of that. I'm sitting there watching Steve, because I was on earlier, and Iron was the agent, right? And <laughs> I'm watching Steve out there. He sat out there for an hour and drank beer with the fans. And he, I said, what are you doing? He's like, where are we going to go? Back to the hotel? He just sat out in the ring. No, we, they kept a 1,000 fans for an hour after the show. Wow. Bro, then get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he did, he did that every night? I did that for a couple of times. Uh, you, know, you remember it, Buffalo that time? I can't, I can't remember that time, but one time we was in the garden or someplace like that, and those guys are all union. And so we kept staying, was drinking beer, drinking beer, and no one ever told me to go home. So uh, next week, go go to Monday Night Raw, and he goes, Vince says, uh, can I talk with you? I said, yeah. He goes, I just want to let you know that you cost me uh, $14,000 in overtime wages for, for staying out there so long. And so I'm kind of like, well, I'm on the spot. I said, you know, what are you going to say? I said this. I said, all right, I'll split it with you. He goes, no, you ain't got to split it with me. I'll catch you. But next time, don't do it so long. Yeah, yeah. So I said, okay. So anyway, next night, go out there. So, yeah. so uh, same thing. Yeah. And all of a sudden, Kevin Dunn gets on the house mic. Steve, time to go home. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, jeez. Yeah, so we avoided the fines from then on. Yeah. That, yeah, I was just out there having a good time. Yeah, well, we were just in the garden recently. And as a matter of fact, it was, it's, it's sad to think about now. I was there for the Paul Colvin night, right? And uh, Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and they had, and they grossed like a million dollar gig, right? And they broke even. Hell on a gig. It cost, no, but they, that's how much. Even on a million dollar gig? Something like that. They said, we're just, you know, because it cost so much. Ridiculous. The rent now is ridiculous. You haven't heard that? No. Yeah, yeah I mean, I don't, I, I may be off by a couple hundred thousand dollars, but. Well, they were saying you guys sold out, but it, you know, see, they don't run it nearly as much if you think about it. Meltzer says it's hundreds of thousands of dollars for one night. Hundreds of thousands. Yeah. What's well, I mean, I don't know, but I mean, you notice they used to run it like, once every two months. They run it twice a year or three times a year now, yeah, right? I used to love it. Yeah. My second favorite building to work in, my favorite was the Rosemont Horizon because there's a wood ceiling and yeah. the acoustics were crazy there. What was your favorite building to work in? Greensboro. I'm just, I'm just well, guessing. Greensboro was before WCW had messed. Uh, Greensboro killed it. Uh, they killed Greensboro. They killed Charlotte. Um, but just my, as, my or, favorite, just as far as like Chicago was a stronghold for for me to yeah. get. But now I love I love working in the garden because how special it was. And I like the Houston Summit. So I like various buildings for different reasons. Yeah. But I always say uh, the uh, Rosemount Horizon in Chicago is my favorite. So what yeah. would you say would be your uh, favorite? Uh, mine would be either uh, that or St. Louis. Yeah, St. Louis. Yeah, I, I was never a big card in the garden. People say to me, you must, you know, you must, I, I never drew any big money in the garden. 
I really didn't. I mean, I wrestled Hulk and, you know, I, I think we sold out, but I, when I wrestled Roddy, right. we didn't sell out. Right. I mean, because I, people didn't know me when I first came up there in 90. But the thing about the garden, the garden was a hard crowd. Yeah. 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 Chicago was, it was, I mean, they're so rabid there. Yeah. I mean, from sports in general, from, from their baseball, football and their baseball teams, uh, they just, men are just rabid. And so when wrestling came in there and that's when I finally started getting the feeling, Hey man, the tide's really changing. This crowd is really endorsing what I'm doing. And there Chicago is part of the big reason I started getting a little heads up. Hey, I'm getting over here. These yeah. people are going crazy. Yeah. Wait, what, what, what was your take? You know, while this was going on, you know, we got, I mean, I know we can't talk to you all day long, but I really appreciate it. What was your take knowing that you were the, the most influential part of keeping the doors open up here while you were looking at, at our product? I know we had your show on in Gorilla and our show, right? I'm sure right. Vince did too. If I remember correctly, you probably had our show on to see what was going on. Yeah. Yeah. What was your take? I mean, were you thinking, oh, screw, I mean, I, I sat there and I was down there and I was mad because they would actually go out on the air and say, you know, we're going to close you down. Right. And these are guys that made a fortune working for Vince. Right. You know, and a Bischoff leading the deal, right? I mean, right. you know, I mean, everything comes around in full circle, but it's just like Vince is this guy, he, he, he's got this uh, ability to, to forgive and forget. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or think, or er, er, about taking, take, or um, someone said he's, he, he's always looking at money, dollar signs and all that, but. I mean, what, you, what were you guys thinking? What the hell? I mean, during the Monday Night Wars, yeah, man, I, I was thinking like, uh, I, I just remember we doing like a real good show, and this is after a while, and then we're getting our ass handed to us for two years in a row, and I was like, man, what's it going to take to beat these guys? And so I, I never really, I y'all had a hot open. I love the open of that show, the flames and all that stuff. Yeah, I kind of dug y'all's open, but then I dug ours too. But then all of a sudden, man, y'all just had a bunch of good shit going on. And so I was so, so immersed in the angles and doing everything that we did. I, I didn't, I couldn't dwell on y'all. No, no, but, but I mean, that. nobody was forcing you to pay attention to that. Then. No, no. Okay, yeah. man, I'm just yeah. doing my thing. We yeah. running up down the road and it was crazy. Yeah. I remember we did the Pillman gun angle. And at, at that time, man, uh, we were, cr the t both territories were crossing in the same uh, mm -hmm. airport there in Cincinnati. And I was going to another place and they were coming in and Shivani and all those guys came through. Why was that with you? Yeah, the, with oh, the boys, the yeah. boys and everybody said hello. I, mean, I was at the memorial with you. Do what? Yeah, I was at the memorial with you. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it was, it, was, it was a weird time. But it was so competitive, man. I didn't pay attention to really what was going on. I just knew that we were we were really starting to make a movement. We were starting to get oh, yeah. traction. The business was really picking up. Yeah. And both both uh, companies were doing such stupid numbers that the the biggest winners out of everybody was the pro wrestling fans. Oh, of course. They back and Absolutely. forth like a kid in a candy yeah. store, man. Yeah. Take part and watch another. Well, you know, that's funny because Kevin Sullivan, who well, I've always regarded as a real smart guy. He made a phenomenal statement the other day to he and I on the podcast, the network, right? The thing that is cool about the network, but it's always going to hurt the product today is they can go back and look at Steve Austin yep. punching out Mike Tyson. They can go back and look at Steve Austin wrestling Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart and a, what are those matches? Uh, well, I was talking about Bret about it. With the famous match you guys had. 13. No, though. The hour long, we're not I quit. Not oh, I quit. The, the Sean was the Iron Man. The, the, the Iron Man. Man, but you wrestled Sean, Iron Man, and Brett, right? Both. Uh, no, Brett, Brett, and Sean had the Iron Man. I never wrestled an hour my entire career. Oh, okay. I thought he, he wrestled Brett the next year at the Rosemont in Chicago at WrestleMania 13. Yeah. Oh, but it wasn't a, wasn't an hour long match. Oh hell no, man. Oh, I didn't know. I wrestled okay. Uncle Joe now. <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't know, but Did I mean, you see yeah. that match? No, but I mean, I, I, I just, no, I get, I don't think I've ever seen it. No, but I'm saying to people, and, and Sullivan said that what's killing it, it's going to be not the downfall, but you know, if you got the network right, it's very sophisticated. I can't work it. I have to have him show me. But right. if you can go back and look at, like, I pulled up that thing last night, before <laughs> Piper slapped you, yeah. slapped Piper back. I mean, that's you don't <laughs> see that anymore. That was really good shit. If it makes me laugh after yeah. all these years. I'm watching this thing, and you're watching them smash snooker with the two. They don't have that anymore. I mean, the guys are out there, and they got some great performers. I mean, Orton's as good as they come. I saw Seth that that told that Rollins will be the next Randy Orton. He's that good. Right. And But the problem is it takes, as you know, years to get that brand. But they, it's not because they're not trying. But they got, like, Ziggler's a hell of a worker, too. But they, 
it's like Aaron says, everybody bats 500 around here. You know, well, you didn't bat 500. You did the rock, you know. I always batted about 120. <laughs> but I won 16 times. Yeah. <laughs> Does that make sense? You needed to. Yeah, exactly. Or you always got the heat back. Yeah, exactly. That's one thing about Dusty, man. We lost in the arena every night, but we got a ton of heat on Dusty right. every TV. Steve, something I didn't know, I found out the other day that Arn has kind of been John Cena's agent his entire time in WWE. Has that always been the case? And, and if so, who was your agent? during Jack Lanza, I got the answer. Yeah, Black Jack Lanza had, had a lot of my matches, many of my matches. And then, you know, uh, Pat Patterson was big yeah. about in the Rock's career, especially with regards to finishes. And a, a big impact on Rock's career. Of course, don't get me wrong, Rock was phenomenal in his own right. And then, uh, but yeah, Black Jack Lanza was really helpful for me. Uh, Jerry Briscoe would chip in and help me. Uh, George Animal still, but Black Jack Lanza always had my matches. Yeah. No, I was there when we were in Kansas City. I loved it. Because Lance is going, you knew I was a big fan. I always got the inside scoop of what was going on, the scope of the action. As a matter of fact, I got to referee one of Steve's matches. <laughs> Didn't you hate referee? I hated referee. I hated it. But because, you had, because, I mean, I've been in the ring. You've been yeah. in the ring twice as long yeah. as I have. Yeah. But and, and as much as you've wrestled and you kind of know what a referee does, all of a sudden you're wearing a striped yeah. shirt. Forget it. You don't really know what. Forget it. I mean, you, you, you get the Forget basics. It. Yeah. But staying out of the way yeah. and just you know yeah. the, you know the the mannerism, yeah. it's a whole different ball yeah, game, Mister. Yeah, it is. And I I refereed his match with somebody, and <laughs> I came back through. Vince said, "That's your last referee job. You're the <laughs> worst referee." I said, "I I never said I was a good referee because I get you. Did you wrestle to Hunter that night or something like that? I can't I remember. remember. But I was the referee with the Kemper Arena in, yeah. in, in Kansas City, and oh Jesus." But I couldn't win with him, you know. Yeah, 80s heels don't draw. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, mean, I, I used to love watching matches just to watch Tommy Young referee. Oh, yeah, he yeah. was great. Yeah, yeah. I love Earl yeah. Hefner as a yeah. referee. There's been yeah. a bunch of guys I like, but man, yeah. Tommy Young was a son of a bitch. He'd go flying around there. His manners yeah. were perfect. I mean, yeah. we all had good chemistry yeah. anytime y'all yeah. were doing something with another guy. Yeah. He, the push, man. Yeah, yeah. And you made a lot of and matches look good. Like, these days, I mean, the, 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 they don't even put over the, the referees anymore because, yeah. like, you know, when Earl was over, baby Earl was mm. over. Yeah. Uh, Tim White was over. Yeah. Uh, but now they're just they're just generic and they don't, yeah. they don't they don't they don't want to mention them. No, I don't. Almost ineffective. Yeah, I know. It's too bad because the referee is yeah. part of the match. Yeah, I know. I'm not gonna say they're gonna sit there and draw you money, but when Tommy Young's referee in a match, yeah. I know it's a big deal. Yeah, no, it was, and then that when he I was there the night when he got his neck broken, uh, refereeing the match. It was a, 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 a yeah, I was an accident yourself. with uh, Tommy Rich. It was yeah. you know very unfortunate, but. It ended Tommy's career that, you know, neck surgery wasn't as sophisticated back then as it is now. He might still be able, but I mean, these neck injuries, I mean, Steve, we're talking to you. So how much are they going to have to pay to take 10 Germans <laughs> in Dallas before we let you go? Because you have to be four that you go. And we're going to ask you, we're going to ask three things. You know, you, last time to me, you said word association. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's start right here. How much are they going to have to pay to Russell Lesnar at WrestleMania? <laughs> I, I see a whole lot of things in my future. In my near future, it's going to be some Mexican food downstairs. Okay. In my projected future, I don't see myself at 32 taking Germans from anybody. Okay. Much less the beast incarnate okay. rock. Okay. Okay. All right. One of my favorites. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Who's winning? Who's winning? Uh, we can't do that because it's me after the fact. Okay. I was going to ask you what your outcomes of this week coming up. Oh, okay. I, I, as we speak right now, I'm talking to Ric Flair on... Thursday afternoon, SummerSlam will have already happened by the time you listen to this podcast. Yeah, there you go. So my prediction is that Undertaker, and this is uh, me predicting the future, mm -hmm. my, my prediction is that Undertaker goes over. How about, um, that's a lot of people's prediction. How about, um, the, and the only reason I question it is because uh, the e ESPN exposure that Brock has brought to the product. You know, they're actually having like game day with Coach. Did you know that? No, I didn't know. At that. Barclays Center, they're having game day. Like, right. with no, I think it's great. Coach hosting it, and he's been on ESPN. Yeah. And his interviews bring so it's because of UFC, obviously, right. but they bring a lot of national attention. Um, I think Taker has to win too. How about Cena Rollins? Uh, okay, so, but but you just said Taker has to go over too. I think so because yes. I thought the word on the street was they go back to for the big match at thirty two. It's gonna yeah. be the rubber match, and that one Brock goes over because. Taker rides off into the sunset. Yeah. Brock moves to the future to, to continue yeah. drawing houses. That's the way I see that. 
So then you said Seth Rollins versus Cena. I didn't know that match had been made. Uh, it's, it's 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 uh, a championship. It's U it's U S championship. US, yeah, against world double championship. championship. Yes. Oh man, boy, you talk about a tough one. Man, I'd love to say Rollins goes over. I haven't followed the storylines, but I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Cena goes over. Okay. I think I think Cena has to win this one just because uh, he did some good business with Kevin Owen, dropped a win, for, uh, dropped one to him, beat him twice, but really got Kevin uh, Owens uh, elevated. Up and yep. But I think at this time, with Rollins uh, has a good head of steam because of his workmanship, I think Cena's got to go over the, on this one. And then you build a something to WrestleMania, or unless he drops this one and then they take this to, to WrestleMania and then he wins there. Yeah. So there's he, two ways to look at it because there's not a whole lot of guys for this guy to work with. That, that, the, I'm, What's my, your prediction? My thinking is that Seth Rollins is the only guy with any steam on him right now. Uh, okay. Legitimate is a heel, right? Yeah. And if you beat him now, and Cena has two titles. Okay. What does it mean? What does John do with two titles? Well, you are right about that, but what, what, what if you run somebody down? Uh, cause the screw job finish, take it into yeah. the that, three-way. You give me your, give me your idea. Go ahead. Well, my, my pitch was, Shame, you know, Sheamus comes in, cashes in, Hunter sends him. So he's money in the bank? He, he cashes in his okay. money in the bank and just lays down and lets Seth beat him. Right. So then the next day he's on the authority and then Seth awards him the U.S. title as a thank you. Uh -huh. And that kind of replaced Kane with Sheamus because Sheamus doesn't really do anything right now. So you let him do that. Now he's over as a heel. He's back. Okay, so that's interesting, but again, I haven't seen the product lately, yeah. so I'm just well, trying I'm to, just get to get but, but your point is, the, what do you do with Cena with two titles with two right. on exactly, it? Right, exactly, yeah. I, I, yeah, and, and I love And he can't John tie Cena. me. No, I know, but he I love You can't tie John me, Cena, Steve. Are you kidding? Here's the thing. <laughs> I love John Cena, but but if you put two belts on that kid, yeah. I mean, I think it's it's going to intensify the heat that he's got on. Yeah, already. No, I, mean, I love him. Yeah, I mean, he's, yeah. he's going to go down as one of the we, best of all. We love Cena. Cena sucks. Yeah. When Thirteen I'm looking, years. I'm looking at the IWC, and it's, it's going to bring in some uh, hard times. Yeah, yeah. I see but, that and too. there's not a harder worker in, in the damn business right now. They're about to do his 500 Make a Wish, and that cat's always got a smile on his face. He's got his nose brutally busted. He oh, comes back yeah. from every single injury early. Uh, he's not the greatest worker in the world. Mm, he's a flagship he's a though. Damn good worker, and every one of his matches, you watch the way he lights yeah. up that crowd. Yeah. Mm. There's electricity in every arena he goes to mm. every time he gets in the ring, especially when it's a high profile match. So and Again, he's not the greatest worker in the world, but can he go? Yes. Yeah. People, people, he's very polarizing. People either love to love him or they love to hate him, but they yeah. all respect him. Yeah. Let me well, he's a special a guy. About him. Has there been a guy in history where he's getting booed like that at the beginning of the match consistently, but then at the end he gets a standing ovation? I ain't never seen I, nothing like it in my I, career. I never yeah. have in my life either. No, it's, it's like that, a ton of credit because they, you talk about a head trip. He's walking on the edge of a razor blade. I mean, because anything could happen anytime he goes out there. He rides that lightning bolt straight down the middle. I ain't never seen nothing like it in my life. Yeah, and even like I, I text Stephanie about three months ago or four months ago. She seen a Stephanie in the ring, right. right? And she goes, "What does it feel like to know that everybody in this building hates you?" Yeah, <laughs> you loser. <laughs> you know, right. Stephanie can be a real eagle, man. Right. But you know, and I, and I, like I text her, you need some of a little more bass in your voice to joust with it, because John's <laughs> got to be politically right, but. Um, but I mean, she they they basically they talk about the fact that he gets booed. Yeah. yeah, he wins the world title. He walks out in Boston, his home state, and they boot him out of the building. It's just strange. But let me tell you something: you take that man off the roster, you yeah, that card out on the uh, out on the road, yeah. Watch how many people come to the building. Yeah, yeah. I say thirty, forty percent less. No, I agree with you. That's yeah. I'm a huge he's John Cena fan. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he's the flagship, but like you said, he does everything. Yeah. I just, but I just I don't know. I can't see. I, I don't see him taking the steam off uh, Seth Rollins. That, that's, 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 a, that's a very good point. Again, you, you've seen the product more than I have. Well, I'm just seeing, I, I'll tell you right now, which everybody knows, it's the hardest ticket to get. Oh, yeah, it's sold out. I mean, every guy got, what's his name, who's manager? Justin Timberlake's manager calling me for tickets. I called John Porco. They're gone. Yeah. They're not available. And how often does that happen? I mean, they can always get somebody in, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No. So, so, Steve, as a fan, what do you think of uh, the possibility? It seems like it's going to happen of seeing a tying or perhaps beating Rick's world title reign, 16. Oh, I, I think uh, that's interesting because uh, I won three Royal Rumbles and no one's surpassed that yet, and that's only three Royal Rumbles. For some reason, you know, Vin Vince has all this log down in these books, and he's he's very meticulous about how he protects certain things. 
So it will it will be very interesting. Where's seen at right now? Is one behind He's the 15. Daddy. He's 15 right now. You're 16? Yes, sir. So uh, then I could see him tying Rick. It'd be hard for me to see him beating Rick. Uh, but then again, that being said, because how many of your championships were NWA? Uh, eight. Okay. Because of that fact, uh, it'll, he'll make up something that if he gets to 17, his were all WWE and Rick's place is still special. For me as a fan, I get what time it is. I want to say this uh, in, in the right way. Rick was the 16, right, 16 time world champion in, in a war where there was just depths and depths of people on the roster. Right. Mm -hmm. And and this was just said on my podcast the other day. I was talking to Sean Waltman, X Pac. I said, Who's the greatest world champion of all time? Without hesitation, he goes, It'd have to be Flair because he's the last guy that did it worldwide. And I said, Yes, you're damn right he did. So with all due respect to John Cena, if he was to get to 17 and, and they eclipse your number of 16, does it mean the same? In, in a guy's book like mine, Stone Cold Steve Austin, my thoughts, it's not even the same ballpark. And that's with due, with this, with due respect to John Cena, who I love, but, but you're the man, and that's the end of the story. Yeah, can you just, can you foot those out? Can you, can you footnote that by saying and Stone Cold said so? Yeah, it's Stone Cold Cena. Okay, so so Conrad, so say, say Cena one day goes because theoretically the kid's got three to five years left of sure, yeah, tank. Yeah, no yeah, telling. Sure, yeah, yeah. At any night, at any time you go to the ring, it could be your last. Yeah. But but say he got to seventeen, what what would that mean to you? Yeah, I mean I, I don't like it, but I, one of the things I don't understand is how the WWE doesn't acknowledge all of them. You know, when when Rick put in Fujinami this year, they showed Fujinami winning the big gold NWA belt. But they don't even acknowledge that the right. WWE doesn't. So that, that I beat him. Technically, it's twenty-one. Yeah. Right. I just think it's going to be funny now that yeah. Rick's been branded all well, these years at sixteen. They'll right. move it to twenty-one okay. if if Cena gets seventeen. Okay. Well, like, but in your eyes, as a wrestling fan, uh, who, it doesn't who, mean as much now. Who who really defines the world champion, the role of world champion, better, John Cena or Ric Flair? Oh, Ric Flair. Okay, and and again, this is all due respect to oh, absolutely. John Cena. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. John, oh, you're my friend too. And let's let's go on to something else. First of all, let, let me close out because I got to get something. We've yeah. kept you too long. Okay. Uh, first of all, I want to say I don't care. You know, I don't think about it. I don't have any bells hanging in my room or house. I'm lucky I had more fun than anybody alive. That I know for sure. <laughs> I've been drunk with you. I, I was you last night. I mean, I went to bed going, and you sent that tweet out. I'm going, all right. Because you can't get these yeah, kids. Yeah, but notice I said we only had a few beers. Yeah, no, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. No, but I'm saying because getting these guys, man, yeah. trying to come out, holy cow. I said, I told Seamus and I said, well, Austin really made you look bad last night, man. Even Steve comes out once in a while. And uh, so we had a good time laughing. But the way I would like to go off this, because the things that I used to love, and I mean, I'm a Mark for Steve, right? Give me a 30 second or minute of. One tequila, two beers, like like you're talking to the crowd, like you used to do. I can't do that. Give me 30 seconds, though. Tonight, tomorrow, I will. Yeah. No, don't do no, it no, on the podcast. Give me one. Yeah. One cold Corona, two shots of a tequila. I can't do it. One, please. I'm not in character. Do yeah. so you have to have a couple to do eaten, that? I haven't eaten since 7 a.m. I'm starving. Oh, well, I'm going to feed you right now. I'm buying lunch. But if we have a couple tonight, we'll come back and reopen the podcast and I'll do bring, it. I'll bring my recorder. <laughs> <laughs> but you got to tell them to turn that godforsaken music it's down and actually have a conversation. I'll pay the. I'll pay the I already know. I heard you say you're back here at ten fifteen. You're working two hours. Yeah, okay. hard time. Yeah. <laughs> hey, real quick before we mm -hmm. finish this up, Sting is is back with WWE. Obviously, you have a big relationship with Sting over the years. We've done a little fantasy booking. What would you do with Sting, Steve? Well, I can't believe that they beat him. Was it Mania last year? Yeah, yeah. and I, I brought him in here and they beat him. Uh, clean in the middle, wasn't it? Yeah. No, no, they had, they, they ran into the NWO. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah, 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 the big smiles. Yeah. I got it. Yeah, I didn't like that. I, I didn't. I, I thought, man, you bring Sting in and you beat him. Man, I do something where it looks like you're going to do the screw job, but then something happens, so then he goes over on Triple H, mm -hmm. who we all love. Yeah. Sure. So, But if you're going to bring Sting in, well, put him over. And so then uh, maybe, maybe, does he, is he in SummerSlam? No, well, they haven't he's, announced anything. No, no, he's at the game tonight and going home. I, t I got, okay, wait, I got, wait. Your, I got your travel. You leave at eight o'clock in the morning. Okay, so <laughs> dude, uh, as far as what do you do with Sting, I don't know. I think he's got another high profile match with him. You let him uh, keep uh, going like crazy in the gym. Uh, put send the ring down to wherever he's living. 
keep knocking all that ring rust off. He's in, he's in Dallas now. Do what? He's in Dallas now. I know. Yeah. So just send him a ring, mm-hmm. and uh, I'd, I'd like to see him at WrestleMania. And I don't, do I know who you'd put him with? No, I don't have any idea. But would I like to see Sting have another match with the WWF? Yes, I would. Yeah. I tell you, I'll tell you who'd be a great opponent for Sting. Who? And I this is this is who I wish he would have wrestled this year and won, Kane. Okay. But now that I've seen this other kid. Kevin Owens, right? The Kevin Owens, would be, who is a legitimate heel, right, would be a great opponent for Steve in uh, Dallas because right. Owens has got enough steam on him now. He actually is a heel. Do you think they'll put Sting in the Hall of Fame this year since in Dallas? I don't know if they're going to put Sting in the Hall of Fame this year. It's funny. I talked to Dave Meltzer from the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, and he doesn't feel like Sting is Hall of Fame worthy because he was never the guy. He says technically he never drew, and I, I think I'm stating this uh, correctly. Uh, Dave can. Please give me a call if, I, if I'm not. But uh, for his longevity, for the type of run that he had, I feel, in, in my opinion, as Stone Cold Steve Austin, he's definitely Hall of Fame worthy. And whether they put him in, in Dallas or whenever, he should be in the Hall of Fame. I agree totally, too. Yeah. yeah he worked I, I, hard. I, I, the dude meant so much to the, to the business mm-hmm. of wrestling. I remember driving down to WCW before they hired me, and Matt Bourne made that road trip with me. He was working down to USWA, too. And Sting was over like crazy. He had the lime green trucks. Remember, like mm-hmm. it was yesterday, it painted mm-hmm. up and yeah. spiked, and he had that place lit on fire. So yeah. just due to the, the the length of time he's had in the business, the, the type of run, the impact he's had on people, yeah, was he ever like the, the number one guy in the history of the business? No, but, man, he was badass and solid and a top guy. Yeah. Yeah. Steve Austin, thank you. We're honored to have you, have you today. And, uh, We've got to get Steve some Mexican food. He's got to go to a 2K party tonight, which I'm not invited to as a result of me, <laughs> my behavior with Steve two years ago. Steve's invited. I'm not. It's okay. I'll wait for Steve to come back. And <laughs> and Steve's going to give me a little toast tonight. We're bringing his equipment downstairs. But thank you so much, Steve. And uh, um, continued success. Um, love your career. Uh, I told you last night that movie you made uh, with the car. And I mean, I think you're on top of your game. Uh, everything you touch seems to be turning to gold. It should. You deserve it. And in my estimation, as I set up my Hall of Fame induction, you are the biggest star in the history of the business. And I don't see anybody coming along right now. John Cena, Ric Flair, Roddy Piper, Hulk Hogan, Randy Savage, you're the biggest star in the history of the business. And I'm talking about a rock, too, because if you did it longer and you stayed with it and wrote it out and you brought something that no one had ever seen, and that was controversial TV. You know, like, you can't do the things that you did back then, but it worked, oh, and yeah. it kept WWE afloat. So God bless you, and thank you. Hey, man, good being on your, on your show. I appreciate that. I got lucky for most of it, but it, it, I had yeah. a good time doing it. I yeah. always appreciate the fan base that sticks with me, and I'm lucky to be on the, the cover of the 2K16 video game. And uh, thanks for uh, having me on your podcast. I wanted to be able to return the favor because – Oh, uh, you was on my show a couple of times, so it's it's great to talk with you. And of course, oh, I was, and then my I, favorite pro wrestler yeah. in the history of the business. Well, so, well, thank you. And then I had to go away. I know. <laughs> <laughs> we won't say where. Yeah, I I went I, I went fishing for a month. But <laughs> <laughs> Without any beer. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, man. God bless you, right, we're John Rand. How about this one? Best podcast. Oh, you know you know what's going to happen now. We're going to come out. We're going to be ranked higher than Steve Austin. How about that? Oh yeah. Oh hell yeah. <laughs> oh hell yeah. <laughs> Woo. Now, uh. Steve didn't really break loose as a superstar until he just acted like himself, Nage. How many guys that have been real big stars are just amplified versions of of their real selves? Hmm. I think that applies to you. Amplified stars, you mean like live their gimmick? Yeah, or 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 their gimmick becomes the way they lived in the first place. I think that's what happened with Steve. Yeah, he just... I mean, I, yeah, I, you know, he, well, he was, he's such a great worker. I mean, Steve Austin is a great worker. Um, but, um, I think it's, it, it, I think the word great comes into play a lot easier when you're very comfortable with your character. Using my daughter right now, she has finally, not finally, she's always been a great. But now she's a, she is so confident. And, I mean, it's a whole, 
difference because they finally have established her as a heel and not a tweener. The tweener is really hard to get down when one day you got to be this, one day you got to be that. Does it make sense? Oh, no, and I, 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 I'm I, sure she's very comfortable with what they have. Her oh, my God. Well. It, 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 it's like night and day. She's not a tweener anymore. And Rhonda is a full-fledged babe face. It's going to be, it, it's got to be the main event one night, and it's going to be incredibly difficult. That's the thing now. Who can follow who? That, that, that's the kind of, that, that's what makes WrestleMania for me. When you have this many great matches, it'll be who can follow who. Now, uh, was Steve the most over guy ever within a, a short time frame? Obviously cut short because of injury? Yes, in my opinion. That's amazing to say, isn't it? But I agree. Absolutely. I, I don't think it's amazing to say at all. <laughs> I don't know. As on-air characters, did Vince make Steve or did Steve make Vince? Um, now, that's a tough question. I mean, I don't think anybody made Steve. I think Steve made himself. But Vince was the perfect. I mean, for a guy that never wrestled, never did anything, I mean, Vince had that promo. He has it to, to this day. And and that's a gift. I mean, we all want to think that, you just, that you're just able to rattle us off and guys write it down. You've got to feel it. Vince, when Vince talks, you know that somebody is, is drafting it because that's the way he likes to do stuff. But he says it because he believes that's who he is. And the same applies to Steve's day. I don't care what you, you write down for Steve or give him or what do you, maybe he didn't read anything. What, what Steve is saying, he believes. And that's what makes it so good. Now, uh, yeah, I, I thought that, you know, it, it's funny because when Vince became the evil owner, he was great. It'll never be done better. And you know how I know it'll never be done better because everybody's tried since then. Exactly. It, it, was, it was weird because I loved it when he did it, but what it gave birth to, I wasn't crazy about. How about you? Uh, you mean other people trying to do it? Yeah. Well, there, there's that. It goes without saying. Nobody's ever, no one's ever come close to being a, the owner of the, and being active on the show. Yeah, I, I mean, I mean, I mean, Stephanie brought a lot to the show too. Myself, I mean, I, I still like. Uh, <laughs> what were they called, Stephanie and Hunter? Um, the Authority. <laughs> I thought that was great. Stephanie McMahon is one of the top ten best heels. In our business. Oh, no question. No, no question. No. When Stephanie wants to get her shit on and fucking turn it on, Stephanie McMahon, I swear to God, it's one of the best heels in the business. I use this extra all the time. You're killing me. <laughs> she, she is something special, man. 